series that began in 1898. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Lane, along with Steve Garciola, and we're glad you could join us this afternoon for this football game. And since we go back to 1898, the Wolverines have come up with 48 wins, the Spartans with 21 victories, and there have been five ties. But these are sort of hard times for both of these clubs in 1982. This is probably as weak a team, I think, as Michigan fans have seen in a while. Defensively, of course, they are strong, but offensively very weak. Michigan State, the same thing. They are defensively good in the middle, but their passing has been very weak. Their running game weak, so uh, evenly matched game, I would say. The Wolverines have won the last three games in a row. The last time the Spartans won back in 1978, and that was when Darrell Rogers was coaching the green and white. But as you mentioned, sometimes the matchups will play a very big role in this uh, series. We'll talk about those matchups right after this commercial timeout. As Steve mentioned earlier, the Spartans have had trouble generating an offense, and the key to that seems to be the quarterback, Leister. I guess the key is always the quarterback, and a, a lot of question marks around Leister, which has muddy waters baffled. I think Spartan fans a little bit baffled by John. Last week, he played in the first quarter and the fourth quarter, didn't play much of the rest of the game, and they're wondering what's going to happen with him. He was injured during practice, the sprained ankle. Don't look for John Leister to play very much today. Muddy has been very secretive about whether or not he will start. Now, as far as the people he likes to throw to, Otis Grant, senior flanker, leads the team in receptions. He is Michigan State's version of Anthony Carter. Moves aren't as good, but when they need a big play, they go to Otis Grant. Now their counterparts at Michigan, Steve Smith. He has been under a lot of heat from the fans. He has thrown seven interceptions. However, his running game is as good as it has ever been. Bo says you might look for Steve Smith to do an awful lot of running this afternoon against the Spartans. And Anthony Carter, I don't need to tell you much about his offense. The story there, injuries. A pulled groin he has been bothered with all year. Watch the hit he takes here. This is the other problem. Bruised ribs. He missed the second half last week against Indiana. He will play today, but he will certainly not be at 100%. On the defense, Michigan State Spartans have James Neely in the middle, a linebacker, 56 tackles. He leads the Spartan defense. Good bet that Michigan will not run up the middle against him. They will try to move to the outsides, possibly try to pass. His counterpart on the Michigan side, Mike Boren. And Mike Boren leads his team in tackles, 64 tackles for the Michigan Wolverines. He is described by some as a wild man. He has forced many teams into a passing offense just to get around him. You won't see the Spartans run at Boren today. And the Michigan Wolverines fan completing their pregame warm-up out of the field. We're awaiting both of those teams to arrive through the tunnel. Michigan State and, of course, the University of Michigan. The Spartans will do a little job this afternoon as far as the scale is concerned, outweighing the Michigan team. As the Spartans come in with an offensive line weighing an average of 244 pounds, their defensive unit on the line at 251 pounds, while the Michigan offensive line at a 241, and the defensive line, even though they go with a 3-4, when you take it all consideration, it's a much lighter unit at 224 pounds. So we await the arrival of the arrival of the Spartans and the Wolverines once again here at Michigan Stadium. Another sellout crowd on hand and Steve. They've had 34 previous sellouts for this series between the Spartans and the Wolverines will be number 35 today. They fill it up every every year for this game. One thing interesting I think we can look for for the start of the game is the reaction of the crowd to Steve Smith. Now that was such a point of controversy last week when he was announced as the starting quarterback. He received a number of boos. The first snap he took from center, a lot of boos. Bo Schembechler very upset with his fans. He said, we don't need fans behind us when we're winning. We need you now when we're struggling. And if they jump on Steve today, it might upset both. On the other hand, the Spartans offensive unit, not just the quarterback, but the entire, uh, entire offensive unit, have been certainly getting their share of moves up at East Lansing. And they said they were sort of looking forward to playing on the road this week. There wouldn't be too many moves. The respective captains of the Spartans and the Wolverines, the Spartans, and the road uniforms with the white jerseys. And the Wolverines, of course, in their home uniforms will be meeting at the center of the field. Uh, we'll be having the toss of the coin. While that's taking place, and we await the arrival of both clubs to come out here for the opening kickoff, let's take this brief timeout. They have just completed the flip of the coin. The Wolverines have won the toss of that coin and have elected to receive. 
Michigan State, of course, will kick off, and they'll be defending the goal to our right, and also to your right, that'll be the south goal. And the Wolverines have made the exit from that tunnel, about ready to come out of the field, as they get all set now to try to pick up victory number 126 for Bo Schembechler here in his 14th season, as they pass under the gold blue Michigan club sign here, and they're up for this one with a record of two wins and two losses. Now, I guess you could just throw out all the other stats, Steve, and say it's a new ball game, it's a new season when the Spartans and the Wolverines get together. Well, you hear the experts this morning. Some say blowout Michigan will win big. Some say it's an evenly matched game, as we talked about earlier, that it's going to be a toss-up one point or the other. I think that's absolutely right. Statistics in a game like this mean nothing because these teams are both about four feet off the ground right now. Well, Steve and myself having a chance to visit with both head coaches yesterday, and both head coaches definitely say they thought it was going to be a defensive struggle. And the Spartans have moved out to please their fans. The Spartan fans definitely outnumbered here at the Michigan Stadium this afternoon, but maybe not with excitement. There's a lot of green and white to our right down on the south end. So you can talk about the autumn colors, but primarily today it's maize and blue and green and white. I think the Spartan fans think their team could win for a pleasant change of pace because a lot of times it's been unrealistic coming into Ann Arbor expecting their team could pull off an upset, but they are very even and they are very high on this game because though they've lost four times, they have been in every ball game and they believe they are just a better football team than everyone says they are. Bo Schembechler, of course, talking about the Spartans, said, he's, said they started with a, one of the most difficult schedules in the United States for a college this year. Losing to Illinois, Ohio State, Miami, and Notre Dame. And on the other side of the ledger, Michigan, of course, winning their opener against Wisconsin, then dropping back to back to Notre Dame and UCLA and bouncing back last week with that 24 to 10 win over the Hoosiers of Indiana. So last minute instruction, both sides. As Michigan gets all set to receive. The Wolverines have moved out there. Some final instructions also for the Spartans. As you see, Muddy Waters. With the uh, headset down there, Muddy, in his third season. It's not been an easy two and a half seasons for him with only eight wins and 18 losses. This might be a big win for Muddy today, just a little bit. Of course, Bo says that this will be the test for Michigan as to whether or not they can be a contender in the Big Ten. He says if they lose to Michigan State today, then it tells him something about his football team as far as the rest of the schedule, and it wouldn't be something good. Mojanko, a sophomore out of Bridgman, Michigan, will handle the opening kickoff for the Spartans. He is number two. 6'2", 189 pounder, and played one time at his high school ball for former Spartan All-America and Jerry Planutis over there at Bridgeport, or rather, uh, Bridgman, Michigan. So Mojanko to kick off, and the Wolverines they have not gone back into their position yet to take that opening kickoff. They have sent out Steve Johnson, number 24, and Anthony Carter, number one, as the deep men back by the goal line. Carter, of course, number one, and Steve Johnson, number 24. Mojianko will have the help of a very slight win. Mostly we have a crosswind here blowing out of the east as we start this ball game. He might get some aid from the right side, a little bit from the east and southeast here. But he has the capability of putting it back into the end zone without a win. Now we look at the other part of the stadium here and sort of a crosswind blowing now back out of the east. But we're all set for the opening kickoff as this rivalry between the Spartans and the Wolverines continue. Wolverines ready for the opening kickoff and Anthony Carter will watch it sail by out of the end zone, automatic touchback and no run back by the Wolverines. So they'll set it up at their own 20-yard line. A lot of people underestimate that as a weapon, a kicker like Mozienko who can drill the ball through the end zone. You completely neutralize somebody like Anthony Carter who obviously can break one. And that's something that doesn't show up in the statistics when a kicker goes through the end zone like that all the time. But that's a very potent offensive weapon. Dan Rice, the fullback, and Lawrence Ricks, the tailback for Michigan. Steve Smith, of course, the quarterback. And a fake going to the tailback. Smith on the run, throwing, and continued to get away, the tight end. Brought down by Joe Stevens. Dunaway, the tight end coming across and taking the throw. 
It's a circus catch, not a real good pass. He just throws it up for grabs. Dunaway with an unbelievable grab. Hello, look what I found. Not a good pass by Steve Smith, but you, I guess you take him when you get him. 20 yards on the completion. Neely in there also on that first stop. The linebacker on the interior for the Spartans, so it's first down at 10. Handoff this time going to Lawrence. Ricks tries to tackle the left guard side. Working a little bit that time on McAdoo. And coming up from strong safety, Tim Cunningham to make the tackle on Ricks. So a gain of about four yards on that carry. And make a second down and six for the Wolverines as they picked up a first down on the first play from the line of scrimmage on a pass from Steve Smith to Dunaway. Good for 20 yards. Ball at the Wolverines 44 yard line. Our ball game just underway. Coming up quickly to put the stop on him was Chris Van Pelt. Van Pelt, the free safety, or rather the left cornerback. Gain of a couple, two yards shy. Ricks has carried twice now for a total of eight yards on back-to-back -back running plays. Third and two. As the Wolverines have started with Smith at quarterback, Rice and Ricks, the running backs, Bean and Carter, the wide receivers. This time Dunaway in motion, the tight end. Fake pitch out, and Smith going deep, aiming for Dunaway out of bounds. Covered real well by Van Pelt on the play. Well, Bowen suggested that it was going to be necessary to pass and move to the outside. So far, he's sticking with his game plan. Ricks went up the middle that one time. Otherwise, Smith has been rolling out, showing some motion, a little play action, because Bo just doesn't feel he can run up the middle against a strong Spartan defense, because that is their one strength this year. Brack and back to punt for Michigan on fourth and two, as Bo that time decided to go for the long one instead of trying to pick up the short yardage. Ted Jones in single safety back for the Spartans waiting around the 10-yard line. Ball sails over his head. It's close to the end zone. Ball bouncing around, and it may have gone back. Trying to be down by the Wolverines at the goal line. But they did touch it, and then it went into the end zone, and then recovered by the Wolverines. Let's see where the officials want to put that ball down. But that punt was good for a total of 52 yards. It's touchback. They'll bring it out to the Spartan 20. Bracken is such a kicker. No, no well, Bracken. No sure. question, all-conference kicker, because that's what you need. Drop it in the coffin corner, almost got one. Start of the afternoon, better than 42 yards. Right now, before we have a running play from Michigan State, let's take this time out. All right. Line of scrimmage, first and 10. Lavelle trying to roll out. Did not find any blockers. And the quarterback getting a starting call in the place of Leister. They swarmed under and led by Carlton Rose, along with Robert Thompson, both outside linebackers. Dennis Lavelle, a senior, has not played at all this year for Michigan State. You look at their press guide, it says Dennis Lavelle has not earned a varsity letter. We'll see only limited action in 1982. He's in the Spartans' biggest game of the season. Loss of a couple of yards. It'll be second down. And 12 for the Spartans at their own 18-yard line. Slot on the left side with Grant in that slot. And it's McClellan on the carry. He is the fullback. He gets up to around the 20-yard line, leading a stop on him is the nose guard of the Wolverines, Al Sinchich. He's the nose guard, and Sinchich very active, along with Carraway and Hammerstein. And that 3-4 wall of the Wolverines. So give him credit for a three-yard carry up to the 21-yard line. And it'll now be third down and nine for the Spartans. Turner split wide to the left. On the right side, Otis Grant, the deep man. He's a flanker. Draw play up the middle. Not enough for the first down. Picked up about three. And once again, since it's the nose guard along with Gergash coming in to make the stop on the Spartans as they are shy on the carry. And it'll be fourth down. And the Spartans will go into pump formation at their own 23-yard line. Fourth down at about seven. Last week, they came out throwing against Notre Dame. This week, much more conservative. Of course, Lavelle has not played at a game yet. So I'm sure Coach Muddy Waters just wants to let him get a feel of these 106,000 fans that are on top of him. So they'll probably be conservative, I would think, for their first three, four series. Carter back to handle the punt from Bojienko. End over end. Carter at his own 32. Anthony gets a right up the center of the field. Down to the 40. 
25 of the Spartans, 30. Might go on away and finally run out of bounds at the 17-yard line of Michigan State on an electrified return by Anthony Carter. Anthony Carter does the work, but watch the tunnel right up the middle. He doesn't even have to work very hard. Nobody's going to touch him. Now he's on his own. Switch to the outside. That's what a good running back will do, and he heads down the sideline. Some beautiful blocks open the tunnel right up the middle. That's how the play's designed. Rosianko well, gets credit for a 45-yard punt, but the return by Carter is good for 51. Great field position now for the Wolverines, the biggest threat of this ball game. Steve Smith on the option gets it himself, gets inside the 15-yard line down to around the 12-yard line, and it was McAdoo of the Spartans making a stop. Some help also from Joe Stevens, the defensive end. You know, it's almost frightening to think Anthony Carter is playing with the pulled groin and bruised ribs and still can pull off a play like that. Carter checks back into the lineup on that last play. Giovanni Johnson was in the place of uh, Carter. Now Carter split out wide to the left off your screen. Steve Smith, the quarterback with Ricks and Rice, the running backs. Hand off to Rice, the fullback, inside the 10, close to the seven-yard line of the Spartans, Calvin Perkins, the nose guard of the Spartans, leading the way to make the stop. Oh, it's uh, close to the first down, and we may get a measurement, and will. Be very satisfied, I think, to try to pound it up the middle down here because nothing fancy. He got this great field position. He knows he can't move the ball consistently, I think, on the ground up the middle against Michigan State. But Lawrence Ricks is awesome going straight up field. They got the first down there. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pound straight at him, straight at Neely, right towards the goal line. All right, the Wolverines are knocking on the door. And that means the Wolverines have picked up their second first down of this ball game. On this drive, it was a 51-yard punt return by Anthony Carter, giving the Wolverines great field position at the 17. It's first and goal with 10.03 to go in the opening quarter. No score in the ballgame. Hand off to Ricks. Cuts back in inside the five, close to the two-yard line. Calvin Perkins down below, making the hit. They had some other help in there. But it was Perkins, along with Banks, helping out on that stop on Lawrence Ricks, the tailback. They'll mark it just about at the two-yard line, just outside the two. So it's second and goal. Ricks stays in there at the tailback position. Rice, the fullback, tucked in behind Steve Smith, the quarterback. Rolls out. Smith keeps it. Touchdown. Wolverine. No flags on the play. The Wolverines go out in front on a carry by Steve Smith, six to nothing. That is Steve Smith's forte right there. He gives you good play action. He'll hold up the linebackers just long enough, and he's gone. He is He's a running back quarterback. He's what coaches like to dream about when they think about running an option play because he's not afraid to run, and he is so good at it once he turns that corner. Smith picks up where he uh, left off last year, scoring two touchdown runs against the Spartans, and starts it off here this afternoon. Haji Sheik, the top of the extra point. It is up, and it is good. And so the Wolverines go four, uh, 17 yards and four plays in only a minute and 21 seconds to take a lead of 7 to nothing with 9.20 to go in the opening quarter. Well, Anthony Carter got things rolling for the Wolverines to set up the first scoring drive on a 51-yard punt return, and after that, it was Wolverines with good running and good block. Lawrence Ricks came into this game with the 10th best rushing average in the nation, 105 yards per game. I think that has a lot of people surprised. He's a workhorse on this team, and I think that kind of touchdown really jolts the Spartans because they know they can't afford to, to give away anything against because they're not going to score that many points. They really can't give any touchdowns away. And Anthony Carter stole that one. He set it up for Lawrence Ricks, and Smith puts the icing on it. Haji Sheik all set to handle the kickoff duties for the Wolverines with 9.20 to go in the opening quarter. 
on those two carries by Ricks and the fullback Dan Rice. They stayed inside. And then it was Steve Smith going outside on the touchdown run of a couple of yards. So they sort of tightened up the Spartans' defense and then tried to string them out just like Bo had planned. Bo wasn't lying. And the wind takes this one off the tee. So uh, Aji Sheik will replace it on the tee and get all set to kick it off. Deep man for the Spartans is Otis Grant waiting at the goal line, moves out to the three-yard line, changes course to the 10, the 15, breaks the tackle, gets across the 25-yard line. Good return as it looked as if he was going to be hemmed in there, but he managed to get away. And Rodney Lyles on the special teams comes through to make the stop. The ball at the 26-yard line. The return looked like it was set up to the right. Otis just didn't see anything, and now he's on his own. He's got no blockers in front of him. If he breaks that one tackle, he's got about another 20 yards, but he decided to try to do it on his own. Grant brings it back 27 yards to the 26-yard line now of uh, Michigan State, first and 10. And on the carry this time, coming straight ahead is Tony Ellis. The halfback picks up a couple of yards, but he paid the price for it as he was hit pretty good in there by Carlton Rose. This has got to be such a tough spot for Dennis Lavelle having not played a single game, and what a game to come into. You come into Ann Arbor as the starting quarterback, and people are saying, who is this guy? Tough position to put a man into. Marcus Tony now at a fullback with the Spartans. Fake handoff by Lavelle, looking for and completion. As this time he goes to the short man. Tom Robinson, the tight end, cutting across Rose and Bourne, making the play. I think Lavelle is pretty impressive what he does right here. He stops, he sets up, he's got nobody. But look how long he waits. He was very patient. Robinson found himself open, and that's what it takes. You've got to be patient against that big rush, and that's exactly what he was. Robinson, by the way, out of Birmingham Sea Home in the Detroit area, a junior who got the starting call at tight end today. Third down conversions for Michigan State up to this point, 0 for 1. And they need uh, about a yard and a half at their own 34 yard line. Pitch out this time comes to Tony Ellis. He gets up to the 35 yard line, but not enough for the first down as that Wolverine defense comes alive and Winfred Caraway, offensive tackle, making the hit. So the Spartans are short and be fourth down. Well, yeah, Tony tripped on that long grass down there, I think, coming out of the backfield. <laughs> they mark it back at the 34-yard line. No gain at all. And it is fourth. And still that long one yard. Moshienko, the punter, back at his own 20-yard line. Single safety for the Wolverines. Anthony Carter back at his own 15. Michigan leads 7-0. Opening quarter with 7.15 to go. Carter will let this one bounce around at the 30-yard line and heading out of bounds at the Michigan 26-yard line. So we've got a timeout with 7.08 to go in the opening quarter. Wolverine 7, the Spartans nothing. Here's your chance to tell it to a judge. Well, Coach Muddy Waters has not had too much to cheer about with his offensive unit this year and still doesn't have anything to go. Wolverines first and 10. Smith on the run, throwing. Complete the corner at the 42-yard line of Michigan. Covered in there by Van Pelt. But that was a good running passing play with Smith running to his right. The criticism of Smith this season as a passer has been that he has not been patient, but here he does the same thing we saw with Lavelle. He rolls out, he looks, and Anthony Carter finds the seam behind the linebackers. Wide open. Smith now two for three in this ball game for a total of 35 yards. First down of 10 for the Wolverines at the 42-yard line of the Bays and Blue. To Ricks. And Ricks gets across that 40 up to the line of scrimmage, maybe made a yard. And hit hard by Carl Banks. So Banks, the defensive end, you could call him an outside linebacker, really, but when they go to that 5-2 formation defensive-wise, Banks will move up there. So Ricks now has carried for a total of 11 yards and four carries. Second down and nine for the Wolverines at the 43. Michigan on top. Opening quarter with 6.24 to go. Delay play. Ricks on the carry. Close to the 50-yard line. Van Pelt finally made the 
a stop on him. But some good second effort by Ricks that time on the carry. Look for the hole. Larry Ricks could have walked through this hole in the front line. There's just nobody there. Once he gets to the secondary, the player's designed that he's on his own to break the tackles. But once they bust him through the line, which they did, he's good for six or seven yards. He's got 18 yards altogether now on five carries. Third down at two for the Wolverines right up the 50-yard line. Caraway at a motion. The pullback going straight ahead is Dan Rice, and he has the first down. Now Rice got his running room last week against Indiana on 14 carries and coming right back today. Fourth first down for the Wolverines. Daryl Dixon, free safety, making the stop on it. Only first and ten for the Wolverines. At the Spartan 49 yard, or rather the 44 yard line. Rice on a couple of carries with a total of 11 yards. Go back now to the I formation. To make the Ricks in the reverse, coming around on the far side is Steve Johnson trying to get outside, gains a couple of yards, not fooled too much, and moving up quickly to make the stop. Tim Cunningham, the strong safety. Took a lot of yardage to string that one out and before he could make the cut. Well, the reverse is something I know we talked about before the broadcast. Bo had said if anybody runs a reverse other than Anthony Carter, it's a brand new play. We're just trying it out. Didn't work as well as he might have hoped, I suppose, but uh, maybe he's trying to save Anthony a little bit. They used up too much lateral yardage that time. Steve Johnson on the carry got three yards. Second down and seven for the Wolverines. Close to the 40-yard line of the Spartan. Again, the option play, Smith will carry. He gets to the 40, across the 40, about the 39-yard line. And Joe Stevens, the defensive end, in there to make the hit. Spartan strung that one out well. Bo also said another one of his uh, buzz phrases, I guess. Lateral flow, defensive flow, he said Michigan State has, which means they all move as a unit towards the ball. They won't converge on one player and let that option work. That's what they did that time. They moved as a whole unit, and they cut off the corner. All right, the Wolverines, one for two in the third down conversion. They've got third down right now, and five yards to go at the 39-yard line. They go to the pro set, and Smith in a passing situation over the middle and broken up by Jim Morrissey, the interior linebacker. The pass intended for the tight end that time. Craig Dunaway couldn't hang on to it once the hit was made. So it'll be fourth down for the Wolverines. You see the pass is there. Dunaway's there, but so is Morrissey. Just puts a good hit on him and strips the ball away. Good play by Morrissey. Can't blame the offense. Don Bracken, the butter for the Wolverines, goes back. He's standing around his own 47-yard line. Jones waiting around the five for the Wolverines. Angle to the sideline. It'll not get there. Bounces around at the 10-yard line and down at the Spartans' 10-yard line. So uh, the Wolverines try to continue to bottle up the Spartans deep in their own territory. You know, one of the problems, too, we talk about Spartan mistakes has cost them some ball. Cost them the Ohio State game, really put them out of the game in Miami. They almost didn't get their team on the field for the punt. They forgot to send a team out there. They just get on before the snap. Those are the kind of mistakes that has Muddy Waters just going crazy, as you see Muddy plotting some strategy there. Not much a coach can do about mistakes like that during a ball game. Inside the 10-yard line, first and 10 for the Spartans. Lavelle, the quarterback in the place of Meister, who did not start with that bad ankle today. And a pass a little bit behind Terry Hawkins, the halfback. He couldn't hang on to it. It was catchable, but just slightly. Well, Lavelle's under a lot of pressure, although he doesn't see it coming. Little bit behind him. It was catchable, but got to have your quarterback put the ball in front of you. Good thing he didn't see the pressure coming. I don't think he would have would have liked what he saw. 66 degrees at game time here. That wind from the east-southeast at 5 miles an hour with gusts up to around 15. They expect a high of around 70 this afternoon here in Ann Arbor and mostly cloudy skies. Michigan leads 7-0 with 339 to go in the opening quarter. Second and 10 and going nowhere on the carry. That time was... Darren McClellan, the fullback, and he is greeted with about one yard loss as that left side of that Michigan defense was in there to greet him. Offensive line just did not move out anybody. 
That's just a suicide play. No place to go. It's a straight dive. He's just got to go in there and get what he can, which was nothing. Caraway at the bottom. Robert Johnson, number 99 on top. McClellan with two carries now for only two yards. And he is just getting back into the starting routine after being out with an injury the past couple of ball games. Lavelle rolls to the right, has to get rid of it in a hurry. Hawkins cannot hang on to it. And he is really belted over there by Bostick. Keith Bostick, the strong side safety. Well, no go for the Spartans. That rush from the right side of the Michigan defense has been awesome. In the last three plays, Lavelle has had no time at all. That's probably why they're designing all the plays to roll right, just to give him an extra second to set up and try to find somebody. Michigan State offensive line has got to do a better job than that, or Lavelle's going to have a long afternoon. He is only one for three for a total of five yards. Mosienko checks in out of punt with an average of 42.5, 42 and a half yards from his end zone, just about the goal line. Carter waits for it and calls for the fair catch just inside the 50-yard line. So the Wolverines, with great field position again, as they'll attempt to start this drive right at the midfield stripe. So Anthony with some uh, quick words from Bo Schembechler. That'll be first and 10 for the Wolverines with 2.52 to go in the opening quarter. The longest run for the line of scrimmage so far for the Wolverines this year, a total of 37 yards, and that's been by Smith. And on the longest pass from Smith, it's gone to Rogers this season for the Wolverines of a total of 39 yards. Ricks on the carry, tries to get outside, gets across the 50, close to the 47-yard line of the Spartans. Howard McAdoo, the defensive tackle, in there to make the first hit on him. And McAdoo, really the quickest defensive lineman in the lineup for the Spartans. Neely has really been neutralized so far in this ballgame. He is the, uh, the linebacker in the middle for Michigan State. He makes most of their tackles. They have been keying on him. They've been blowing out a lineman to go after just Neely. And so far, they have neutralized him because the running game is working. Delorio checks out of there for the Wolverines on the line. James back in there now at the left guard. Here comes Smith with a pass to Carter. He stays in bounds. It's complete at the 33 of the Spartans. He knew exactly where he had to be, stopped, and then finally was covered by Chris Van Pelt. It's the same play we saw before. Carter just finds himself into the seam. That's where this mix and match offense works. Bo runs a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. That draws the linebackers in a few steps. And then suddenly Anthony Carter can find that seam. So Bo is really mixing it up well. Smith, three of five for a total of 46 yards. Carter on the receiving end of two of those passes for 29. First and 10 for the Wolverines at the Spartan 33. Going straight up the middle that time was Rice, the fullback. Got close to the 30-yard line, just across the 30, and stopped by Carl Banks. At the 29. So a gain of five yards, second down at five. Rice with 15 yards on three carries. Ray Lane, Steve Gargiola from the University of Michigan. Glad you could join us with 1.46 to go in the opening quarter. The Wolverines on top, 7 and other. Ideal football weather for this one. Let's hope the rains will stay away. Licks on a carry, tries to get outside, and breaks one tackle, gets close to the 25-yard line of the Spartans. And Ricks showing some good power that time. Kalinov, number 47. The cornerback on the right side for the Spartans getting credit for that tackle. Yeah, it's a luxury to have somebody like Ricks because you can run what Eric Arcita used to call misdirection. You can send your blocking to the right, and you can put a guy like Larry Ricks out there by himself. He has just one blocker against four defenders, but he's strong enough that he can carry off a play like that, and you can really deceive a defense. Third down and three. The Wolverines have converted on two of their previous three tries on third down conversions. That'll be Ricks on the carry, cuts back in, close to the first down. Stacked up there with McAdoo and Perkins, along with Stevenson on the tackle. Way to lay on pile. And they have it, first down. Well, the third first down for the Wolverines. And around the 22-yard line. Well, Ricks... Steve, so far, has been the busiest ball carrier with uh, eight carries and 28 yards. He is a workhorse. You don't need, he's very deceptive in that he can carry the ball 30 times and you won't even notice it. Wolverines have their sixth first down of the ball game with 34 seconds of the opening quarter to go. Ricks on a carry again. Inside the 20. First greeted there by Chris Van Pelt. And then Morrissey came on top. But it was Van Pelt getting credit for the tackle on Ricks. 
Uh, he was showing some pretty good speed by the time he got to the line of scrimmage. You know, at the beginning of the season, Bo was asked about Lawrence Rickson losing Butch Wolfolk, and he said how tough a loss was that. He says it wasn't a loss at all. It's just that Larry Ricks will not have an opportunity to show what a talented running back he is, and I think Ricks is living up to that. Delorius checks into the Michigan uh, lineup in the line now. Delorio out. And time has run out. That is the end of the first quarter. And the Wolverine fans have something to cheer about. Michigan 7, Michigan State nothing. Michigan rushing in the first quarter, 60 yards, MSU 5 yards. Does that tell the story of the ball game? Steve Smith even got a smile on his face. Smith, by the way, 3 for 5 in that opening quarter for a total of 46 yards. And as uh, Steve told you earlier, the Spartans, Lavelle, who got the start at quarterback today, really has uh, not had much to smile about. He is 1 for 3 for a total of 5 yards, but it's been the Wolverine defense that really has slammed the Spartans around in pretty good shape. And they've been able, the Wolverines, with their offensive unit and special team to take advantage of some openings supplied by the Spartans in that opening quarter. Second quarter, first play of the second quarter, second down, and six for the Wolverines. Knock it on the door. And that time it was Dan Rice, the fullback carrying, tried the right guard position, got close to the 15-yard line, and Morrissey and Neely, the linebackers, making the hit. Very much a different game plan than last week against Indiana. And the whole ball game against Indiana, Michigan passed 57 yards. So already with 46 yards in the first quarter, Bo much more liberal with Smith passing the ball, and he has found Anthony Carter wide open. Vince Bean checks out of the lineup now. And they bring in double tight end with Dunaway and Sim Nelson in there. And Smith rolls out looking for Carter. Can't find him open. Now we'll have to scrap it. And still gets the ball away. And a fine catch that time by Sim Nelson, the tight end. Tackled by Neely and Kyle Banks. But give the credit to Steve Smith on the scramble. I don't think you'll hear the fans boo Steve Smith for a while after that play. Talk about patience. He wants to find Carter. Carter lined up to the left side. Smith is rolling out, looking for him, but Carter's double covered. Here comes everybody. Smith going down, but gets it off, and that is so hard to do, and finds Nelson, who was just waiting for the ball, just hoping Smith would see him. Well, Smith now has uh, racked up a total of 50 yards in the passing department, four of six. But he had a scramble for the yardage that time. It was good enough for the first down to the Spartan 12-yard line. So the double tight end formation paid off for Bo that time, although that was not the play they were looking for. But it worked. Rick's on a carry. Find some daylight. And I don't know how he got through there at the 10-yard line. I managed to pick up three additional yards close to the 7-yard line. And Neely at the bottom of the pile. When Rick should get three, he gets five. He is so strong. Here's, watch him up the middle. Again, there's a good hole, and he just dances through, breaks a tackle, picks up an extra two yards. Story on the first down department, seven for the Wolverines, none for the Spartans in the early moments here in the second quarter, with the Wolverines knocking on the door again. Second down and five for the Wolverines. Long count this time by Smith. Ricks again. Rick started from the seven-yard line and moved in for the touchdown. Ricks can give you a double threat because he's so quick and so strong. The play goes outside, makes the cut right back up the middle, and there's just nobody there. When you're that big, you don't need to follow your blockers. Ricks now... With the touchdown to his credit in this ball game, he has carried 11 times for a total of 45 yards. Haji Sheik in there to try for the extra point. He's one for one so far this afternoon, 45 in a row, and contact is made along the line of scrimmage, and the flags go down. First flag of the ball game. On that drive by the Wolverines, they go 50 yards in nine plays, and taking only 426 to accomplish the touchdown. Spartans get a little bit anxious to get in there and try to block that one. I would think Michigan would decline the penalty only because you don't want to move any closer to the goalpost. The angle is tough enough already, and they have declined it. Aji Sheik, all set to go. Hewlett 
is the holder for the Wolverines. Ball is down. The kick is up. And the kick is good. So with 13.26 to go in the second quarter, the Wolverines of Michigan, 14. The Spartans of Michigan State, nothing. All set to go with the kickoff after the Michigan Wolverines made it a 14-0 ball game, 13.26 to go. And so far, it's been all Wolverines. Smith, four of six for 50 yards. Ricks has carried a total of 11 times for a total of 45 yards and a touchdown. And Carter with a couple of catches for 29. On the other hand, the Spartans have not had too much to cheer about. Lavelle only one of three for five yards. The quarterback for Michigan State. Ellis has carried a couple of times for only three yards for the green and white. As Haji Sheik places that ball down. Well, if you coach Muddy Waters and you know your strength is your defense against the run, I would think at this point you got to be sweating a little bit. Otis Grant waiting for the kickoff deep in his own end zone. He'll not try to run it out. So they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line, and the Spartans will start from there, hoping to get something underway. So Sheik has the put into it that time. The offensive line makes it look so easy for Larry Riggs. Move to the outside, cut to the inside, and there's just nobody there. And that's when you know the line is doing its job. When you're in a short yardage situation, and you can dance into the end zone. Nine plays, 50 yards. Ricks with a seven-yard run for the touchdown to give Michigan that 14-nothing lead. Wolverines now have Terry Hawkins in at the running back or the halfback position. McClellan, the fullback, in behind LaBelle, the quarterback. First and ten. And nobody to go to. And LaBelle taking punishment. A lot of it that time. The first man to hit him was Dave Meredith. Meredith. Out of Sterling Heights, Stevenson. And really playing in a backup role to tackle this afternoon. What you don't want to get forced into if you're Michigan State is a desperation situation. They are known in their offense for liking to throw the bomb. They have thrown nearly 40 passes of more than 40 yards this year. But you don't want to get caught up in that in the first half. Well, that time he lost six yards at second down and 16. Into the pro set now. And LaBelle, low pass coming out to McClellan. That time he couldn't hang on to it at the shoe tops. Hurried that one. There was just no chance that time for McClellan to hang on to that ball. So it's incomplete, and it'll be now third down and 16. Well, the inexperience showing a little bit on LaBelle. He got a little anxious back there, which is easily understandable. Michigan putting on a heavy rush, and he knows it's there. And he knows the Spartans are not moving the ball. They have depended this year on the pass. And now that is his responsibility. Terry Hawkins back into the lineup down for the Spartans. That's third down at 16. So far, Michigan State 0 for 3 on the third down conversions. Got to be passing situation right now. LaBelle fine, complete. That's out to Jones, and the Spartans have their first first down. Evan Cooper. And there to make the stop on him. Cooper, the free safety for the Wolverines, but Jones fighting the scene that time. Jones was wide open. He ran a pattern straight down the field. Nothing fancy about it. Did just a little hook at about the 30, 35 yard line. And he was wide open for an easy catch and a first down. He just finds the seam. That's what the receiver has to do, split the linebackers and the safeties. And Lavelle is out of there at quarterback, and Leister is in there. Bad ankle and all. Leister rolling to his right and firing. And this time is complete to Tom Robinson, the tight end. So Leister, trying to pick up a little slack, has taken over for Lavelle. John Lott, the weak side uh, halfback, making the stop, and he is shaken up on the play. Some of the Michigan State people have suggested we might see all the quarterbacks today. Leister is hobbling a little bit, but he has still got a great arm and drills it right into the open spot. He has more experience because he's played more, obviously. But the rollout could be tough for him. That'll wear him down because he has a bad ankle. He injured it in the Monday practice after the Notre Dame game, which would have been last week. And he has not run very well all week, which is why he did not start. But then he wasn't very effective in the Notre Dame game. That was part of the reason he didn't play. But at this point, Muddy obviously feels he needs some experience in there. And Leister is the man for that. John Lott, under his own steam, coming to the sideline. The trainer there is Russ Miller, the head trainer for the Wolverines. 
So LaBelle left the ball game two for five for 20 yards, and Leister now one for one for a total of 17 yards and a first down. Spartans at the 50 yard line, first and 10. Michigan leads 14 0 with 12 minutes to go in the first half. Leister wants her over the air, swing pass to McClellan. Stays inbounds, crosses the 50, and gets to around the 46 yard line before he's greeted by Carlton Rose of the Wolverines. Well, they might be trying to set up one of those bombs we talked about. That short kind of swing pass usually draws the linebackers in a little bit, which is what Bo was doing to Michigan State. You run those short passes and short runs to the outside, try to bring the linebackers up a few steps, and then drop one over them. Tony Ellis checks out of the backfield for the Spartans, and Aaron Roberts, number 20, checks in. He is the tailback. And a fake by getting away and does a flag goes down around the 30 45 yard line and chances are we'll get holding on that one Paul Gergash is the man that was really in high pursuit that time of Leicester well a quarterback doesn't mind seeing that holding penalty because it's either holding for 15 yards or he might be saying good night for the rest of the afternoon with that kind of rush so a quarterback will thank his lineman for a holding penalty there even though he missed his block First penalty of the ball game, although we did have the flag dropped on the extra point attempt and contacted line and nothing happened there. So if you want to be uh, really official, the second penalty, but the first one that's been marched off this afternoon. And that'll be marched back into Michigan State territory at their own 44 yard line. Holding was the call against the Spartans. You could tell on that play that Leister was having trouble trying to stay away from the defenders that time of the Wolverines. Far from being 100 percent, but Muddy Waters, as Steve said, figuring that experience would be a little better than what happened to Lavelle in there in the opening quarter. He just could not move the ball club. Leister again, and he finds a man open. Could be a fumble, and they'll rule it incomplete. That time, the pass coming out to Tony Ellis, and he started to run before he had it. It looked like he came up with the ball himself, although I thought it was a completed pass. It looks to me as though he makes the catch, and now he's turned, and he's going to start to run, and he just forgot to bring the ball with him. I thought he had possession, didn't you? The referee says no. I thought he might have had it and started to run with it. So it'll go third and 17 for the Spartans, back to their own 44-yard line. Leister, two for three in the passing department for a total of 20 yards. Draw play this time, going to the tailback, and it goes nowhere. Might have picked up a yard. Dave Meredith, along with Boren, in there to make the stop on the Spartan carrier. And there was just no place to go. That'll be fourth down and 17. And a timeout right now with Michigan on top by a score of 14 to nothing. Tom Piet, the center for the Spartans, was shaken up on that last play, and he is having some uh, help getting off the field right now. And the officials will have to wait for the All Big Ten center to be helped off the field. It's fourth down at 15 for the Spartans. The ball back at their own 46-yard line. Mosienko back in punt formation. You cannot tell whether it's a knee or an ankle. Looks like a knee on uh, Piet, who is a good one. A good player out of Rutford Union in the Detroit area. He's a senior. Mosienko on his previous three punts averaging just around 42.3 yards on his attempts. So this will be his fourth of the afternoon with 10.47 to go in the second quarter. Wolverines on top, 14 to nothing. Low, spiral, aim for the corner, and bouncing into the end zone, and one of the officials taken out on the play as he was trying to cover it on there. Carter was watching the ball. And one of the officials really hit to the ground, but he is up and he's okay as he was hit by Williams, Carl Williams of the Spartans, unintentionally. Oh, clearly a clip. I can see it. Oh, Spartan hit him. I guess it was. I just didn't see him. He got in the way. Carter let it roll, and I guess that was a Michigan bounce in the sense that it just scooted right down the sidelines into the end zone, and they'll take it on the 20. Not quite sure what hit him, but he's all right. John Nealon, the referee today, Dan Davy, the umpire, the headlinesman is Wayne Meese, the line judge is Don Lanlo, field judge Bob Coleman, and the back judge Chet DeStefano. And that was Chet that uh, I believe got roughed up on that one. He is okay. First and ten for the Wolverines. 
at their own 20-yard line as they get the Wolverine bounce that time on the Michigan State punt, a gain of a couple of yards to the 22-yard line as Calvin Perkins, the nose guard, comes in and greets Ricks on the carry. And Ricks, the busiest ball carrier of either ball club this afternoon on his 12th carry now. For a total of 47 yards, he came in as the top running back in the Big Ten. And last week against Indiana on 22 carries, gained a total of 124 yards. Second down and eight for the Wolverines. Rice, the fullback, and Ricks, the tailback, coming out of that eye. Fake by Steve Smith. And now going to Carroll over the middle. And contact is made on a good defensive play that time by Gerald Dixon, the free safety coming up and breaking up the play. But Carraway for a moment there was wide open. Incomplete. Dixon, like a center fielder, was just back there waiting for him. I think he thought he had an interception. He's just standing and waiting. Now he tries to cut in front. Dunaway didn't see him. Ended up making a nice play and breaking it up from an offensive point of view, but almost an interception. Well, the Wolverines faced with third down and eight now. And they have converted on their third downs thus far, three for five. Well, the Spartans are still old for five in their third down conversion. Smith leads five yards for the first down. He's going to the cover. He's got it open. And a bit of leg race between he and Maidler. And Carter forced out of bounds at the 17-yard line of the Spartan. It was not made low as Kanama, the cornerback, getting chased and finally forcing him out of bounds. Carter Kanama forcing Anthony Carter out of bounds on the long play. The Wolverines have a first down, but they're knocking on the door again. If Anthony Carter is healthy, he is gone. He made a nice cut right to the goalpost. He's got about a four-step lead at this point. If it's a foot race, he's gone, but he's a little bit limp with that groin pull and the bruised ribs. And Maidlow takes him out of bounds. Carter and now with three receptions, good for a total of 90 yards, and we still have 9.44 to go in the second quarter. Ricks on the carry inside the 15, close to the 12-yard line of the Spartans. And once again, Calvin Perkins in there to make the tackle. Perkins has been very active at the nose guard position. He's been about as active, Steve, on defense as uh, Ricks has been on offense. Well, I'm not too sure if Michigan's offense is this good today or if Michigan State is just just porous today. But Michigan State, through the first four games, has had a good defense, but they're not showing it today. Michigan moving right through them with whatever they want to do. They take Bean out of the lineup and come in now with a double tight end with Dunaway and Nelson. And Steve Smith fakes it and carries inside the five-yard line. Dixon at the bottom of the pile, along with Cunningham on the hit for the Wolverine, or rather for the uh, Spartans. But Steve Smith almost at the four-yard line. Smith has carried four times now for a total of 18 yards. Bowen said yesterday the corners would be vulnerable, and that is right where Smith heads. Makes the fake to the outside on the handoff and just keeps it himself. So far, the Wolverines' offensive line has beaten that defense. Defensive line of the Spartans. Smith on the roll on. Steps back in, picks up a couple of yards, and will go no further. Close to the three-yard line and leading the way for the Spartans on the stop. The linebacker, James Neely. He was looking for Anthony Carter in the end zone, and really, I don't know why they're bothering. The way they've been able to run the ball at the, at the ends, you really ought to just keep it and roll it out. Ricks has been tough up the middle, and Smith has found the corner. I doubt Bowles put it up in the air again. Smith on five carries, good for 20 yards. He has one touchdown on the ground. That'll be second down and goal for the Wolverines. The ball placed just about halfway between the second uh, and third pass stripes on the far side of the field. Smith keeps on the feet. And coming up there quickly to make the stop was Banks. As Banks hurriedly got his arms around Smith that time to make the key stop. And maybe a loss of about a half a yard. So Smith, six carries. And still has 20 yards. No gain on the play. Third and goal. You know, just before that play got off, Anthony Carter coming to the sidelines was signaling to the, one of the officials time out, but nobody saw him. So maybe there was a play they had in there that they didn't want to run. Carter now has just spoken with Bo, who has given him a new play. And Steve Smith has that new play. Carter out wide to the right. Rice and Ricks, the running backs, in behind Smith. Double tied in. And 
and the flags go down. Too much time by the Wolverines. So the Wolverines will pick up a penalty, a delay of game, and five yards to be marched off against the Maize and Blue. Bo not real happy on the sidelines. He's not getting what he wants from his offense. There's been a little confusion. He's been shuttling plays in and out, and Steve Smith apparently is not too sure at the plays that are coming in. And that one calling some audibles, just too, too much time. Art Valardis bringing in the new play now and replaces Diorio in the line for the Wolverines. coverage of a tight end but there was enough daylight over there as Smith stepped back and on a third and goal got the touchdown and a pass to Dunaway big play by Steve Smith as he waits and waits and that is the key patience Dunaway makes his move double coverage they crossed in front of each other almost defensemen almost screened each other out Dunaway's an awfully big target Dunaway making the reception and the touchdown, his first touchdown of the season. And Haji Sheik's kick is up and good. And with 6.48 to go in the second quarter, the Wolverines on top of the Spartans by a score of 21 to nothing. Well, it's been all Wolverines. And the scoreboard testifies of that fact. 21 to nothing with 6.48 to go. Haji Sheik on the kickoff. And waiting back there is Otis Grant. And instead, Ted Jones comes over there, picks it off, takes it out of his end zone, crosses the 15, gets close to the 17 yard line. And is that time on a low line drive off the toe of Haji Sheik, handled by Jones. It'll be first and 10 for the Spartans. It's Smith to Dunaway for the touchdown after a costly penalty mistake. No mistake on this play. He finds himself wide open for the touchdown. Eight plays in 80 yards. A seven-yard touchdown for Dunaway, 21 to nothing. With six minutes to go in the second quarter, Michigan way out in front. That ball at the 17-yard line now for the Spartans. Their own 17, first and 10. Leister stays in there now at quarterback. And Leister trying to play catch up now. A little swing pass out to McClellan. Completed. And gets about four yards out of that play. Robert Thompson, the outside linebacker, leading the way to force him out of bounds over there. But McClellan could not find enough running room to turn the corner after he made the uh, perception. They'll give him five on that passing play. So make it second down. And let's see. They're going to call it six. or we'll make it uh, second and four. Now a little mix up. Uh, taking a lot of time to get their men straight now. Turtle is called Leister. Asked for a timeout to get things straightened up. By the fifth time, fifth game of the season, you should not be having those kind of problems. But uh, while they discuss those problems, we'll take a timeout. But Michigan on top by a score of 21 to nothing. Well, Leister, hopefully he got things straightened up. He is three for four since coming back into the ball game here for a total of 24 yards. And for the Spartans right now, it is second down and five. Leister almost uh, had that ball picked off. As he threw it softly, John Lott, the cornerback for the Wolverines, moving up there and was thinking interception. And a couple of intended receivers that threw it right between them. Gergash in there, giving some good chase that time and pressure. That was a very strange play. Lot seemed to freeze up like he was so surprised the ball was coming at him. He didn't think he should go after it. So the Spartans face now with the third and five. And they have been unsuccessful picking up a first down. Trying to make those third down conversions so far in this ball game. Swing pass to McClellan. Screen out there. He's got the first down. The far side of the field and gets across the 35, close to the 37 yard line, still in Spartan territory. And Marion Body in there to make the initial hit on McClellan. The Spartans are in a tough spot offensively only because Meister just doesn't have the mobility to set up anything more than these little swing passes. And this one works for some big yardage, but Michigan will soon be able to adjust to that, knowing that he can't set up and go deep. And that has got to put the Spartans in a hole. First and 10 for Michigan State now at their own 38-yard line. Hawkins in there 
the running back position. Hawkins on the carry now and gets a couple of yards close to the 40 yard line swarmed under and leading that swarm with the Wolverines Mike Boren. Well there's the wild man born says get out of my way just fights off the tackle and he's got the ball carried. That's what you need from your middle linebacker somebody who knows where the ball is and has no trouble getting there. Coaches dream about players like that. McClellan with three uh, receptions so far for the Spartans for a total of uh, 23 yards. Second down and eight at the 40 yard line of Michigan State. In possession of the ball right now. Reister firing high to Jones and complete at the Michigan 45 yard line. Gergash and Bourne in there, along with Cooper, making the hit on Jones. Meister that time staying in the pocket and really fired pinpoint a hard pass and a completion made by Jones. Well, the defense drops back in all the zones they're supposed to be, but the key is just finding that little hole between the zones. There's always a seam between the linebackers and the defensive backs. That's enough, fellas. Get off me, says Ted Jones. Spartans have picked up four first downs all through the air. Now they move their wide receivers from the right, or wide receivers from the right side to the left. And Leister coming over the middle, and it's complete to Otis Grant. Close to the first down, Mike Boren covering. And he has enough for the first down at the Michigan 34-yard line. Good play by Grant that time, sort of hooking and coming back in on the reception. Hey, John Leister is really showing us something with the way he's moving. After each play, he limps around to the huddle, but look at the mobility. He sets up, makes a good hard throw while backpedaling, and that is awfully hard to do. He's playing a good, tough ball game, but he can hardly walk on that ankle. So it's coming into the ball game in the second quarter. He is six for eight for a total of 67 yards. Leister wants to go to the air again. And Gordon Gergash will have to get out of bounds a dozen times. Gergash was behind him, and then giving more chase and more pressure by the Wolverines was Tom Hassel to force him out of bounds of the game. Out of about five yards on that carry. They'll be second and five. We're down to 446 to go in the second quarter. The Wolverines of Michigan on top of the Spartans of Michigan State, 21 to nothing. Until this last drive by the Spartans, it had been all Wolverines, both on offense and defense. Leister, another pass going out. It's completed to Hawkins. And Hawkins at the 21-yard line, brought down and stopped by John Lott and Bostick. First down for the Spartans at the 21 of the Wolverines. Meister mixing his plays well, a good rollout. And the short swing will work against a, a good secondary if you can throw in front of it. The Leister now 7-9 for 79 yards. And the Spartans have a first down and try to knock on the door. The Spartans sixth first down the ball game. And a knock on the door of the Wolverines. Hand off in the front of the fullback. Inside the 15, down close to the 11-yard line. Bourne riding him down. Quick opening play on the right side at the guard position. And McClellan making the most of that daylight to get down inside the 15. Michigan State had 19 yards rushing last week against Notre Dame. The line was just not blowing out any holes. This is the first drive they have shown any signs at all of life. And that offensive line has begun to move a little bit. McClellan, three carries for a total of 11 yards. And good blocking that time by Manhoff and Schramm on the right side for the Spartans, allowing McClellan to get that daylight. Misdirection play this time, and Leister on the carry. And he is stopped by Tom Hassel, but not until after he got inside the 10-yard line and good for another Spartan first down, close to the 7 of Michigan. Down to 336 in the second quarter. Well, the Spartans may be very patient here and just very satisfied to score one touchdown and go into the locker room 21 to 7 because the game would certainly not be over by any means. 325 left there, now down 21 0. Spartans pick up their first first down by the run. Uh, two carries by Leister for a total of 14 yards. First and goal now. And on the carry, and going nowhere that time was Tony Ellis. Well, they blocked up the hole in a hurry that time with Hassel making a stop. But Hammerstein and Sinchit would have no part of it for Michigan. They did not give any ground out there. A gain of maybe a, a yard, so second and six. 
or second and goal. Allison, uh, four carries now for a total of six yards. He has uh, paid a lot of punishment to get those six yards so far this afternoon. At the six yard line, second and goal for the Spartans. Pitch out this time to Ellis. Gets a good block, but is not going to go any place. Swarmed under and almost fumbled the ball. He had a good block from McClellan that took care of one of the linemen, but then Gurgash came up quickly, and Ellis wanted to reverse the field and had no place to go. And then for just a second, Tony thought about throwing the ball. I don't know where he was going to throw it, although he was just anxious to get rid of the ball. It's a good block, and he makes a nice cut, but there's just no place to go. Tries to reverse his field. Now he thinks about passing it. That would be a terrible mistake. They don't need that down in this kind of territory. Well, Ellis now on a five carries is a minus two. Before that, he was four for six yards. And I believe the Spartans have called for a timeout with 2.08 to go here in the second quarter. Leicester wants to get things straightened out with Muddy Waters over there. So far, uh, the Spartan fans have not had too much to cheer about. Well, I think down that deep, they did realize that they cannot go up the middle against this Michigan defense down near the goal line, which is what set up that Ellis play to the outside. It's going to take some kind of, and I use the, keep using the misdirection from Air Force Legion, which is send all the blockers in the flow one way and go back the other way because Michigan State really isn't strong enough to do much of a power move against Michigan. They're going to have to run to the outside, maybe a little sideline pass, but it's going to take more than sending Tony Ellis up the middle. Well, Ellis that time uh, lost eight yards. The Spartans were at the Michigan six-yard line. They're back at the 14 now, so it's uh, third and still goal. So they've got to get in for the touchdown or at least come up with some kind of point here before the uh, half ends with 2.08 to go. Tony and Hawkins are running backs between, uh, behind Leister on third and goal. And Leister gets away from one would be tackler running for his life. Let's go and almost intercepted. The pass is in it for Otis Grant. It was thrown low as Leister was really running for his life from Gergash. And then covering quickly the defensive backs, Cooper and Bostic over there in the corner. So it's incomplete and fourth down of 14 for the Spartans. Just didn't have much time to set up and look for anything. It was a rollout designed to give him a few extra seconds, but a heavy Michigan rush. All he could do was throw it away and hope they can come away with three points. Moshenko back there to try for the field goal. It'll be a 31-yard attempt. Pick us up. And the kick is good as Bojenko gets the Spartans on the board with a 31-yard effort with 1.55 to go in the first half. It's the Wolverines, 21, and Michigan State, 3. But they should have had more than that for their effort down there. So Mojenko now is four for seven in his field goal efforts so far this season for the Spartans. And I can't really think of any other team offhand that has one player do everything as Mojienko does. I know Muddy said that uh, Chester Markle used to do all his kicking, so he sees no reason why it should be strange for Mojienko to do the punting, kickoffs, place kicking. He certainly does a fine job of it, although I know they're a little disappointed coming away with three points. And you're down by three touchdowns. This close to halftime, it's a little discouraging to have to settle for that. Spartans uh, use 12 plays to go 68 yards in four minutes and 48 seconds, so give uh, credit for that Wolverine defense. Plus a couple of mistakes made by the Spartans. They had to call a timeout when they uh, couldn't line up right. And then give the Wolverines defense a little bit credit, though, once they uh, got inside the 15 that tightened up down there, especially when they got to the six-yard line. Shenko all set to kick off. For Michigan State, Carter goes back into the end zone and will not attempt to run it out. The automatic touchback now. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line of the Wolverines, so they've got 155 to get something going here in the first half and leading by a score of 21-3 to over uh, the Spartans of Michigan State. Well, people have suggested, why does Anthony Carter play on the specialty teams kickoff and punt return when he could get injured more seriously than he is 
but he is such a potent weapon you really can't afford to, to give that up. He already set up one touchdown with a punt return and he's the record holder of punt returns at Michigan. First and ten as Rick's on the carry. Picks up about five yards and showing some pretty good balance while he was getting hit that time to pick up those five yards. The story on the scoring drive for the Spartans. Took them 13 plays, 82 yards. You go that far, you just don't want to settle for three, but Spartans at this point might be glad to have three on the board. 21-3, they trail. Michigan very likely will be satisfied to run out the clock. Rex has carried now 14 times for a total of 57 yards. Second of five with 123 to go in the first half. Wolverines on top. Steve Smith wants some more. Going deep for Jennifer Bean and out of bounds. Going to a split end, Vince Bean down the sideline for the far side of the field. He was covered pretty well in there, and it's incomplete. See, what did I tell you? They'd be satisfied to run out the clock. Do I know this <laughs> game or what? Well, he should have been satisfied to run out the clock. Third and five. That's true, but he wants some more. But do you think he'll go deep again? I don't see any percentage in that. I don't know why you would want to even give a hint of changing momentum. I wouldn't want to send Michigan State into the locker room with any reason to think about anything positive for the second half, and an interception would do that. Anthony Carter out wide to the left, and Bean wide to the right. And the throw set. Smith on the delay now. Here's Curry. Gets the first down and gingerly gets across the 30-yard line to the 32. As Morrissey, the linebacker, with help from Neely, making a stop that time on Steve Smith. First down for Michigan, mark it at the 33-yard line. The clock continues to roll with 1.06 to go in the first half. Wolverines on top, 21 to 3. And Lott, the cornerback, getting a little extra work right now. He's played a good game on defense. John Lott. Under a minute now in the first half, Smith. Takes the handoff, still wants to go to the air. He's going deep. To Carter, jumping around, almost intercepted, and Carter almost wound up with it. And a flag goes down. Might get a little unnecessary roughness down there. Lonnie Young and Phil Parker, the cornerback and free safety, covering Carter on that long pass from Steve Smith. Anthony Carter almost found himself a touchdown. They're obviously not satisfied with a 21-3 lead. Smith puts it up for grabs. Carter is by no means open. He is double covered. But he almost has the ball. And well, Michigan arguing about here. the late hit. Yeah, I think so. That'll go against Michigan. Well, the line of scrimmage will mark off this penalty of 15 yards of the real estate. Back inside the 20, close to the 18-yard line. Unsportsmanlike conduct. You know, Anthony Carter that time, and he got up, thought of, maybe thought the ball was intercepted. Let's watch his action here again. I think coaches always say the referee sees the second hit. And as you say, Carter might have thought the ball was intercepted because Carter is hit here, and he gets up and yeah. delivers another hit. He says, don't hit me like that. That was a late hit. The second late hit usually gets the penalty. Second at 25 of the Wolverines, 44 seconds to go in the first half. And Rick's on the carry this time, gets across the 20. Stevens in there to make the hit on him, along with Williams and some help from uh, Wojciechowski. So at the 21-yard line, it's second down at 22. And under 30 seconds to play in the first half. We may have one more play here with the Wolverines on top, 21 to 3. Only three penalties in the game. That's a surprise. 60 yards on the ground so far from Ricks. As Smith goes over the middle. B makes the completion. The reception, that is, at the 38-yard line. As soon as he made the catch, he was hit in there by Terry Lewis, number 10. And the Wolverines will call for a timeout with two seconds remaining on the clock. And they are shy, by the way, of a first down by about uh, six yards. Again, Smith goes up in the air. You know, this might be kind of a reverse psychology. Rather than worrying about giving Michigan State some confidence with a possible interception, Bo Schembecker is saying, well, let's end it now. Let's demoralize them now right before the half because if we drive right downfield and score or come close to scoring, this ball game is over. So that may be the strategy in going to the air. Let's take away all their confidence now. I think that just shows how confident Michigan is right now. 
Steve Smith in the aerial department is hit on seven of 12 attempts good for a total of 135 yards and by the way coming into this ball game this afternoon Anthony Carter had a chance to set a lot of records uh, career receptions while at the University of Michigan uh, he started the afternoon with 139 or rather 129 he has picked off four of the passes so he has four receptions and that gives him a new all time career mark passing Jack Clancy who uh, had the record at 132 so the all time pass receiver of the University of Michigan and that now goes into the history books belonging to Anthony Carter fourth down and five Smith with lots of time Prefin time employed by the Spartans it's incomplete intended for Carter time runs out and that's the effort in the first half the first half has been completed with the University of Michigan leading the Spartans of Michigan State 21 to 3 and only seven for the Spartans yards rushing 15 yards for Michigan State 10 of them Leister the quarterback when your hobbled quarterback has 10 of your 15 yards that tells the story yards passing 99 MSU 135 for Michigan that's already more than double what they had last year total yards 243 for the Wolverines only 114 for Michigan neither team has had a turnover yet but again it's been all Michigan so far and right now there's no indication it's going to change and of course as we came on the air with our telecast we were talking about if there was a bright spot for the Spartans it was their defense but it hasn't shown at all in the first half Neely has been completely neutralized as the middle linebacker. I don't even know how many, more than a handful of tackles if he has that many. They have run to the outside, the inside. Michigan State's defense, which is their strength, has been controlled, and that's the difference. Okay, if we have a crystal ball right now, polish it up, and what do you see in the second half? It's panic time for MSU. Although there is a whole half of football left, their offense is geared towards the long pass, towards the bomb, towards that panic-type touchdown. That's what they have to go to now. They have to get lucky because they're not going to control the ball game in the second half. And you see the Wolverines playing a conservative game in the second half. They're still throwing for points. Well, I was already wrong once there, saying Bo was going to get conservative. I guess they won't he's having so much success with Anthony Carter and Dunaway he'll probably let uh, Smith continue to throw the ball and control the ends okay we'll put away the crystal ball for the next 30 minutes and see what develops in the second half we'll have that second half for you right after this time out both Michigan and Michigan State teams have moved out now talked about some of the overall statistics but individually it's been Lawrence Ricks who has been the busy person for Michigan 15 carries, 62 yards. It's about a 4.1 average. And Steve Smith, 7 for 13, a little better than his uh, season mark as far as uh, completion percentage. Not surprising to see Ricks carry the ball so much. Steve Smith, Bo had said Smith would be running the ball an awful lot today, but he's passing more than was originally in Bo's game plan. But when you're successful at it, there's no reason to change, so I would look for pretty much the same thing out of Steve Smith in the second half. He's mixing it pretty well. Aji Sheik getting that ball down on the tee to get the second half underway. Otis Grant back in deep safety at the goal line for Michigan State. The Spartans to receive as our second half is underway. Taken at the goal line by Grant for the 15. Gets across the 20 from daylight to the 30. And finally brought down at the 34-yard line. On a nice return by Grant Hewlett, making credit for the uh, getting credit for the tackle on a 34-yard return by Otis Grant. The Spartans will start off at their own 34-yard line. He ran the play just where it's supposed to go. It was a right side return, and he found the hole. And he breaks through the pocket right there, and now he has to break a couple tackles on his own. First and 10 for the Spartans. McClellan on the carry. Picks up a couple of yards, gets across the 35. Gergash and Bostic in there. To make the tackle, a couple of yards on the carry, second down and eight. The official attendance announced this afternoon at 106,113. And that's the second largest crowd ever here at the University of Michigan. So they say uh, capacity is 101,701, and they just keep uh, swelling it each weekend. 106,113. McClellan has carried four times for a total of 14 yards. Robert Thompson coming off over to the bench. And they'll check on Thompson, the outside linebacker for Michigan. Second and seven for the Spartans. Leister pitching out on a fumble. And recovered.
recovered by the Spartans as Hawkins could not hang on to it. And ball just above the knees, Caraway in there to apply some pressure along with Rodney Lyles. Lyles, the outside linebacker in the place of Robert Thompson. Well, John gets a little bit careless on the pitch. Well, actually, I take that back. No, he didn't. Hawkins had it right in the numbers. Can't blame the quarterback for everything. Hawkins just dropped the pitch. Almost a three-yard loss. They call it third down and nine. Michigan State, two for seven of those third down conversions. They need one badly here to get the second half uh, underway. Leister looking for somebody, just gets rid of it. Almost in the second half, finally completed. As Jones makes the reception. I think that was Bostic that got his hands on it, or was it Cooper? That was Bostic that got his hands on it. Cooper made the stop, and the reception made by Jones. And a flag goes down to the Michigan 40. Well, you have to get the big play and a little bit of luck. That's the combination the Spartans need in the second half. It was not a real good pass by Leister because there's nobody there but dark blue shirts, and all of a sudden, look what I found. And there's nobody behind him. Picks up an extra 15 yards. That's the kind of big gainer the Spartans have to count on in the second half if they're going to get back in the ballgame. But once that reception was made, a clipping ball goes against the Spartans, and so all for naught as they'll lose this one back to the 45-yard line, their own 45. But Jones makes his third reception for a total of 55 yards. After the reception, the Spartans are called for clipping, and the balls march back now to the Spartan 45-yard line. But it will be first down and 10 for Michigan State at their own 45-yard line. Tony Ellis checks in now at the tailback position along with uh, McMullen at fullback for Michigan State. Meister, the quarterback. Ellis on the carry. Slants off tackle and guard on the right side. Gergash in there along with Bourne to make the hit on Tony Ellis. So he picks up about three yards on the carry, second down and seven. Now Ellis checks out, and Hawkins comes in a tailback for the Spartans. I always get the feeling the Spartans are using the short play only to set up that big pass because they it's almost as if they know they can't grind it out against Michigan, but they have they feel compelled to run the short plays. Trying to draw off the defensive secondary and it'll bring up with Michigan. Pass going completed on a super sketch by Hawkins, a little bit behind him, but he managed to hang on to it. And just as he got the handle of the ball, Gergash came up and let him have it. He's shy of the first down by a couple of yards. Hawkins makes up for that fumble in the backfield with this catch. Leister rolling out. Throws off the wrong foot. It's a little bit behind him, but Hawkins spins to make the catch. But the short of the first down. Carlton Rose checks in there. And Hewlett comes out. Michigan State now. Three of eight on a third down conversions. They need a couple of yards. Leister pulls his way in for the first down. Across the 45. Close to the 42-yard line of Michigan, and Robert Thompson, the outside linebacker of the Wolverines, in there to finally corral him. And they'll place that ball down at the 41-yard line. The Spartans with the first down. Michigan's 41. 12-17 to go in the third quarter. And it's Michigan leading by a score of 21-3. to Leister has carried the ball three times, bad ankle and all, for a total of 16 yards. First and 10. for a couple of yards just inside the 40 and Boren in there to greet him along with Al Sinsich. That could have been a busted play. He turned around, just didn't see anybody. Tried to make something out of it. But there was nothing there for him. This would be a good time for him to go upstairs. Terry Tanker checks in at tight end. Number 87. Tom Robinson got the starting call of tight end this afternoon for the Spartans. Keeper in there now. Second down and eight. Swing pass to McClellan. They wanted to form the screen out there. They had no success as the Wolverines came up quickly that time. They were trying to get Lark out there as a blocker, but he was behind the screen almost. And Gergash and Burgai in there to make the hit on McClellan. So no gay. Meister a little anxious. The screen is really a slow developing play. He put the ball out there right away. The blockers just did not have a chance to get out in front of their man. And if there's no screen, that play very obviously doesn't work. You've got to let it develop. Actually lost a yard on it. A couple of yards, so they're back to third and ten at the 40 of the Wolverines. Leister over the middle. It is complete. It's not good. It's right in. Breaks a 
couple of tackles, battles his way for the first down, just getting inside the 30. Cooper and Bostic in there to drill him, but not until they had got the first down. That's Terry Tanker, a senior out of Westlake, California. Tanker does it all by himself. When he catches the ball, he is still about seven yards short of the first down, and he just drags them across the marker. He knew exactly how far he had to get for the first down. Outside linebacker Carl Lowe checks out there. Out of the Michigan lineup. And the Wolverines put a five-man line in there. Four defensive backs, or five defensive backs, rather. They were looking for the pass, Gergash and Boren in there to make the stop that time on the Spartans. And he got about three yards on that carry. Second down and seven. For Michigan State. Darrell Turner checks out. Ted Jones in there now, and the wide receiver slotted on the right side. In place of Turner, fumble for Michigan State, and the Wolverines may have come up with it. And they did. A fumble recovery and a big turnover by the Spartans inside the 30-yard line of Michigan. They make the mistake, and the Wolverines capitalize. They recover it. Well, that time I think you have to blame the quarterback. Leister made the move. It is an option play designed for him to either turn the corner and run up or pass it off to the back on the outside. And he threw it probably when he shouldn't have. There were a lot of defenders around him. Still trying to unpile down there. The call has already been made that it belongs to Michigan. And we'll see who came up with it. It may have been Cooper. It was Cooper. Recovering the fumble for Michigan. For a costly turnover by the Spartans, and the Wolverines will take over. Across their 25-yard line, close to the 27. First and 10. First possession for the Wolverines here in the third quarter. Ricks on the carry. And pulls across this time, the 30-yard line, close to the 32. That kind of drive can really kill you if you're Michigan State because they ate up a lot of time on the clock. And to come away empty, you did nothing but help out the Michigan uh, offense and defense because you gave them a good time to rest. You just can't give away a ball after you're going to eat up the clock. Well, as a story, it's been a very good ball game as far as turnovers. Looks on 16 carries, now 67 yards. McAdoo and Perkins getting credit on that last hit. Defensive-wise, second and five. And Smith hangs on to the ball see him put it in the belly that time of the fullback Rice and a little sloppy getting it back and slowed him down he couldn't make the cut and Smiley Creswell was in there to hit him from behind that just looked like the old belly series that time wasn't too sure what he wanted to do with the ball and on that kind of play you really have to make a move that's what happened to John Leister he wasn't too sure and at the last minute he made the wrong decision well Smith made the right move and that he just ate it at the 31 third down Six. Dean Smith trying to get the first down. will go to the air, and that was thrown behind Ricks. And the fans here would like a late hit applied to Banks, but it won't happen. No flags go down. But the pass was behind Ricks that time incomplete. Ricks was open out of the backfield. He just floated out to the left-hand side, makes the turn with the passes behind him. Carl Banks comes up with the late hit. Fans didn't like it, but just a little love tap, no damage done. Well, Bracken in there to punt for Michigan, only his third of the afternoon. This is a total for him on the season there at 20 punts. He's had one of 52 yards so far this afternoon. And a fair catch signaled for him, and down this time by Michigan State's Darrell Dixon. And around his own 29-yard line, we've got a timeout with 8.58 to go in the third quarter. Wolverines 21, the Spartans of Michigan State 3. Well, the Spartans got rolling in the early moments of this uh, third quarter, only to see a fumble inside the Michigan 30-yard line, see what they can do on this possession with 8.58 to go, and trailing 21-3. to Meister wanted to go over the middle instead of swing pass off to McClellan, the secondary receiver, and the fullback gets close to the 34-yard line. McClellan comes up this time with his fifth reception of the ball game, brought down by Robert Thompson. So they gain about five on that play, second down and five for the Spartans. Just inside their 35-yard line. 
McClellan getting a lot of action in this ball game after being out the last couple of weeks with injuries for Michigan State. He'll share time with Marcus Tony at that fullback position for Michigan State. Spartans looking for their first win of the year, and they're trailing 21-3. Michigan looking for their third win. Trying to get outside and having no success on that one was Tony Ellis, Hassel, and Boren. The linebackers grabbing a hole from behind and riding them down. Not enough for the first down, maybe a yard gain on that carry. Third down and four. So Leister has hit on passes five straight before that running play. He is now a total of nine of ten since coming in the ball game in the second quarter. Of course, that may look a lot better than it is because they've all been so short swing passes. Those are tough to miss. Hassel checks out from the linebacking post. We threw it in there in the pitching secondary. Five backs. Leister going deep. And through the hands that time of the intended receiver, Daryl Turner, covered by Cooper on the play. Cooper was looking for it on his right side, then had to turn around and try to make the reception behind him on the left side. Leister had Turner wide, wide open, but John said that foot might be bothering him a little bit, just couldn't get the ball to him. When Turner turned, it was too late, the ball was behind him and gone, but he had him open. Rossiaco to try for his five, a fifth punt of the afternoon. He's averaged in his previous four, 43.3, his longest of the afternoon so far, 54 yards. Back in single safety for Michigan is Anthony Carter. Spiral to Carter, running toward the sideline at the 20-yard line, and it goes out of bounds. With a running catch and no return, we've got a timeout with 7.27 to go. Wolverines in possession and leading in the game by a score of 21-3. One of the Spartans uh, injured on that last play and being helped off the field to our left. And that's uh, Merrick. Kashmirik is getting some attention now and being aided by Clint Thompson and his staff, the head trainer. Clint Thompson to the left there for the Spartans. Michigan in possession now of the ball with 7.27 to go in the third quarter at their own 20-yard line after the punt handled by Anthony Carter and going out of bounds at the 20. We are talking earlier if the Spartans stay on the low end of this score on the ledger and lose this one will be an 0-5 record for the green and white while Bo Schembechler's crew will go to 3-2 and two, but more importantly in the Big Ten, Steve, 3-0. and oh. And Bo has every reason to be confident about the rest of the season after what he has seen so far. Now, obviously, a lot of time left. The complexion of this game can surely change a great deal and change quickly because the Spartans are a big play offense. And you better know that Bo knows that. But should the game continue like this, he's got to feel good about his team. Money Waters, on the other hand, cannot feel good about this season so far. 1982 for his Spartans. Buddy yesterday he said there were some rumors earlier in the week that if you didn't win this one, you're going to step down. He said, no way. I'm going right through this campaign. I'm going to continue to build this Spartan football program. Ricks on the carry. Gains about three yards. Gets up to the Wolverine 23-yard line. And Cresswell in there to make the stop. Cresswell, he had an ankle problem in yesterday's practice for Michigan State. He was a bit of a question mark whether he'd be able to play in this game. Ricks has carried 17 times for a total of 70 yards. Calvin Perkins down on the artificial turf right now. Another injured player from Michigan State. He is the uh, nose guard for the Sparkies. Well, he'll get some attention. And while they do a little work on uh, Mr. Perkins, let's just do a little work in the commercial department with this timeout. 21 to 3, Michigan. Special attention given to the injury of Calvin Perkins as he was helped off the field and over to the sidelines of Michigan State. That could be a big loss for the Spartans. He is their nose guard. Meanwhile, the Wolverines line up at the line of scrimmage for the second down and seven situation at their own 23-yard line with 7.06 to go in the third quarter. Steve Smith passing out and complete to Carraway, the tight end. Breaks a tackle, slips across the 30, gets the first down close to the 34-yard line as James Neely gets credit for that tackle along with Tim Cunningham, the strong safety. Steve Smith is just not the same quarterback we saw last week. He has got his confidence back. He is looking for other receivers. He's getting the ball there, Carraway wide open. And he can turn a short gainer into enough for a first down. 
First and ten for the Wolverines at their own 34, and they lead in the ball game 21 to three. And we are in the third quarter. Rick Sinclair hits the green, crosses the 50, and finally tripped up in Michigan State territory around the 49 to 48 yard line. Van Pelt, the cornerback, making the hit and the tackle. Watch the acceleration of Larry Ricks. He is through the hole and he is gone right there. Once you're past the linebackers, you know you've got an extra 10 yards and he is so quick through the line. Ricks trying to get another 100 yard plus day for himself. He has carried 18 times and so far in those 18 carries has 100 or rather has 88 yards. Well, first down and 10 for the Wolverines. And the fullback going straight ahead is Dan Rice and brought down by Neely interior linebacker on the left side actually they bunched those linebackers in the middle there on their 5-2 alignment for Michigan State against the run inside the 45 market at the 44 and so right now possession the Wolverines on a pretty good drive going Rice the fullback has carried five times so far this afternoon for a total of 21 yards Carter split out wide to the left for the Wolverines. Rogers in there now and uh, does not carry as he moves out to the right. Smith faking the pitch out to the tailback instead giving to the fullback and Stevens coming in to make the stop on Dan Rice. Rick's rushing numbers are so impressive I think primarily because unlike at schools like Southern Cal where a running back will carry the ball 40 50 times Rick's is just one of many weapons that Michigan has. He doesn't carry the ball all that much. He's got a pretty high per carry average. Wolverines with a third and one situation, a long one. They have been able to convert on those third down uh, plays six out of ten times. Rodgers on the carry should have enough for the first down. He was greeted right at the line of the scrimmage and then uh, moved the green and white another couple of feet and enough for the first down right around the 37 yard line of Michigan State. At the bottom of that file, getting some credit with Steve Maidlow returning to action, the linebacker for the Spartans. He was out with a knee last week. And mark it between the 42 and 43. For stat purposes, we'll call it at the 42, first and 10. I said the 42, I'm sorry, 37, excuse me, 37 yard line. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Up that time, as Rice did not want to let go of that ball, let alone the arms of Steve Smith Creswell in there to make the stop. I don't Smith think Smith wanted to give him the ball. I think Smith <laughs> said this will be a nice fake. He said, fake nothing. I'm gonna get myself in the record book too. So he took off with it. Here you'll see on the replay, Smith sticks the ball in there, gives a real good fake, and says, We'll give it back. <laughs> Didn't work. Got a yard out of it. Second down and nine at the 36 of the Spartans. The fake this time. And looking for Carter. Interception made at the 12-yard line. Flag goes down at the 12. Anthony Carter high into the air and taking the ball away from Tim Cunningham. Covered on the play. Oh, Carter with a great reception that time. Might be a face mask down there. Steve Smith got popped just after he threw the ball, but he got up just fine. He was not hurt. You just see him going down there. Anthony Carter, how many times has he done this? Heading for the sidelines, goes up in the air for the catch. And there goes the flag. So Carter through the air today with his receptions, a total of 109 yards. And Smith now 9 of 16 for a total of 165 against the Spartans. So they've made the announcement that he is the all-time career leader in receptions for the University of Michigan. So passing the mark held by Jack Clancy. At the 12-yard line of the Spartans, first and 10 for the Wolverine. Ricks on the carry. Cuts back in, gets close to the 10-yard line. Picks up a couple of yards, maybe three at the most. And in there was Shepard and Steven. And they mark it back at the 12. Give him two yards, or rather to the 10. Give him two yards on the carry. He now has a total of 90 yards on 19 carries. That's for Ricks. Bean checks out of the lineup. And they go to the double tight end. With Dunaway and Sim Nelson. 
Carter split wide to the right. Long count this time by Smith. Fakes the handoff to his fullback. And cannot hang on to the ball. Dunaway, Craig Dunaway had it at the knees, did the juggling act, and couldn't hang on to it. He had everybody beat. Oh, he had the ball, and he knows he had it. How badly does he feel? He makes the turn. He is dead in front of Steve Smith. He sees him, puts it right on the numbers. And Dunaway's got it. No, he doesn't. Uh, Craig loved to have that play over and not on the instant replay either. So the Wolverines, third down and eight. They've converted on their third down situation seven out of 11 times. Smith, plenty of time. And the ball is knocked away that time on a good move by Mainlo, flicking the ball away from the intended receiver. As he had his tight end again, Dunaway, the man that Smith was trying to get to. But a good play turned in by Maidlow. They ran the same play, and Dunaway appeared to be open again, but Maidlow cut in front just behind the uh, defensive line and tipped it away because Dunaway was open in the end zone. Ali Haji Sheik will mark down that uh, T at the 17-yard line. A 27-yard field goal effort. Hewlett sets it down. Ali Sheik's kick is good. And Michigan goes on top now by a score of 24 to 3. And we have two minutes and 52 seconds remaining in this third quarter. So the Wolverines scap off the drive with three points after Dunaway, the tight end, could not hang on to a, a look like a touchdown pass in the end zone. Well, I'm sure disappointing more for Dunaway than for Michigan because they come away with something. And that is your main concern when you're on a time-consuming drive like that. You want to get something. And they got three points, which just adds to that big total. 21-point lead now. And Muddy Waters knows that's an awful lot of points to score in the final quarter of play. Muddy certainly has to be disappointed with his defensive unit. Not so much in the second quarter, in the late stages of the second quarter, or even here in the third quarter, but really the first quarter and, say, the first uh, seven minutes of the second quarter. Well, I think that's when the tone of the game was really set. And at that point, somebody has to take momentum, and Michigan just stole the game away in that first quarter. And although they didn't do all the scoring, then that was really the difference because their confidence was up. And I think the Spartans felt once they lost their defense, they knew they were in trouble for the rest of the game. Grant waits for it a couple of yards back into his end zone, maybe three yards out. He elects not to run it out. Decided better on the deep kick by uh, Holly Sheik, Haji Sheik. Let's go back for a minute and talk about that last drive that was capped off by the Wolverines on a 27-yard field goal by Haji Sheik. They moved it 70 yards in 11 plays. And look at the time they took there, 5.15. Capped off by the 27-yard field goal. And leaves only 2.52 left on the clock here in the third quarter. Now, well, John Leister, see if he can move his team at all this time on this series. Intended that time for Daryl Turner Cooper over there to cover. That ball got just about two thirds of the way and then seemed to float the rest of the way, giving time for the Wolverine defenders to cover on the play. And Leister just isn't getting enough zip on the passes, and it could very well be his ankle that he can't set a firm enough plant to get a hard pass off because, again, he had his receiver. He's wide open, but the ball is just floating, floating, and that gives the Michigan defenders time to converge on it. Second and ten. For the Spartans at their own 20-yard line with 2.45 remaining in the third quarter. Wolverines on top, 24-3. to Leister goes out after safety. And the sound to carry and goes out of bounds. And he was covered by Mike Bourne, who wanted a piece of Leister badly. Well, John was smart to get out when he did. You don't want anything to do with Mike Bourne if you can avoid it. Leister on the carry. Got six yards. It'll be third and four. And Leister now on the ground has carried six times and picked up 24 yards in the air he's 12 for 17 for 119 yards and consider that he did not make the start today and did not play the first quarter but it's been catch up most of the afternoon for the Spartans. third down they're five for 11 and third down conversions into this situation they need four yards for the first down here Leister getting plenty of time over the middle at the 30 yard line as he zipped one in there and that one was completed to his running back Tony Ellis and enough for the first down just enough as Bourne greeted Ellis once the reception was made. 
So it's at the 30 of Michigan State, first and 10 for the Spartans. Tony Ellis, certainly the workhorse on this team. They don't do a lot on the ground, really. As we said earlier, their offense is the pass, but Ellis has become a prime pass receiver. Otis Grant has been very silent today. Last week, the Spartans only managed to pick up 19 yards in the Russian department against that fine Notre Dame defense. And they've had trouble on the ground today against the Wolverine defense. Leister throwing deep and out of bounds. Intended that time for Otis Grant. Leister that time running to his right, trying to get some extra uh, time to get a receiver open. But uh, not too much luck that time for Otis Grant. He was covered pretty well as Gergash, the linebacker, went all the way down there and helped out of the coverage. Bostic also over there along with Evans, Evan Cooper. Leister now 13 of 19 for 123 yards. So it's second down and 10 for Michigan State, still at their own 30-yard line. They trail with 2.07 remaining in the third quarter, trailing the Wolverines 24 to 3. Grant in motion. Meister on the run. Over the middle. Intercepted by Bostic. Intended that time for Ted Jones. Way over his head. Bostic moved in, made the interception, dropped to his knees. The ball was ruled dead at the 47-yard line of the University of Michigan. The second turnover by the Spartans. Well, unfortunate for the Spartans. They're forced into this, this kind of catch-up panic ball where they have to go for the home run. They have to go for the long pass because they put so much pressure on a quarterback who is as good as John Leister. He's got a great arm. But he's having trouble planting on that bad foot today and just made a bad pass. So Bostic picks up his second interception of the 1982 season and giving good field position to his offensive unit. The Wolverines will start this one off at their own 47 first and 10. Pitch out this time to Rogers trying to skirt left in and in there to grab a hold of the sleeve and throw him down with Stevens the defensive end on the left side. Nothing fancy about the play. Rogers takes the pitch, goes right for the corner, and now picks up an extra five or six yards by himself. Rogers, a sophomore out of uh, Inkster's Wayne Memorial High School. He's carried twice so far in this ball game now for a total of 13 yards. He stays in there at the tailback position. His fullback in front of him is Dan Rice. The quarterback, Steve Smith, who's had a good afternoon. Rice, the quarterback. Breaks a couple of tackles and finally stumbles to the turf inside the Spartan 30-yard line. They'll mark it down close to the 27. And they'll also give Kamada, the cornerback on the right side, a little credit for the tackle. Now, sometimes when you run the option well, you can pull off one of these because that freeze holds the linebackers just long enough to allow your back to hit the hole. And Garrett hit the hole very quickly. The linebackers weren't waiting for him. They were looking for Smith to roll out. Oh, I'll uh, stand corrected. It was Garrett. Definitely on the carry. He's in there with Rodgers. The pitch out goes to Rodgers now. Gets a good block. Gets back inside and gets close to the 20-yard line. Good block served up by Garrett that time on Chris Van Pelt, who was moving up quickly. And he took him out of the play, enabling Rodgers to make the cut and move up and finally brought down by Dixon. That's the kind of thing all the coaches notice. A lot of fans don't see that in the stands, but you better believe the coaches see a block like that from a running back. It really opened up the play. Well, you saw the career mark on uh, General Bo there, trying to add one more to that victory column this afternoon with 32 seconds remaining in the third quarter, second down and four for the Wolverines. And moving straight ahead that time, Eddie Garrett, the fullback, should have enough for the first down as he gets inside the Spartan 15. The young pile will be close to the 13-yard line and brought down by Stevens. And again, Smith plays out the fake beautifully, and that freezes the linebackers. That's what you need from a quarterback. After he gets rid of the ball, the play isn't over for the quarterback. He has to play out the fake and roll with the ball just as though he has it, and that'll open up a hole. Young Mr. Garrett out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is a freshman. He's carried it twice now for a total of 13 yards. Wolverines, first and 10. Smith. the seconds ran out to close out the third quarter there was a strike from Smith to Anthony Carter in the end zone for a touchdown for the Wolverines 
Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure. Bo's going to have to quit telling us how injured Anthony Carter is because if he's only playing at 80%, that's the most amazing 80% I have seen. He has bruised ribs. He has a pulled groin. And he is still probably the, one of the most talented individuals in this country. And with that touchdown reception, he goes to 34 in his career. All-time Big Ten mark on those passes. Haji Sheik splits the upright, so he stays with his perfect streak. And right now, Michigan ups the ante to 31 to 3. Steve Smith going back, rolls out a little bit. And when he pulls up, you know who he's looking for. He never went to anybody with his eyes except Anthony Carter, who made a turn into the goalpost. They put the crunch on Anthony, but it's a little too late. He's already got it in the end zone, 31 to 3. And that was the final play of the third quarter. So we get all set for the fourth quarter. Michigan on top by a score of 31 to 3. All set to go as we get all set for the opening kickoff to start the fourth quarter. Haji Sheik, let's go with this one. And waiting down there is Otis Grant. He'll run it out of his end zone. Does a little dance movement. Gets close to the 12-yard line. He looked a little hesitant from the time he got the ball to where he was going to go with it. And finally brought it across his 10-yard line. The last touchdown. I guess Spartan fans are tired of hearing about Anthony Carter, but he is so good. Makes the moves look so easy. A little turn to the inside and finds himself wide open another Big Ten record a Michigan record how many of those will he continue to pile up five plays 52 yards 14 yard touchdown for Carter it only took two minutes at the 13 yard line after the return by Otis Grant the Spartans deep in their own territory and trailing 31 to 3 14 57 to go in the fourth quarter Meister throwing and this time throwing behind his intended receiver so it's incomplete to Grant covering on the play Tom Hassel the outside linebacker Thompson comes out of there right now for the University of Michigan and Rodney Lyle checks in on the outside linebacking post on the opposite side of where Hassel's playing that's on the left side Second down at 10 for the Spartans. With a lot of catch up to play. The McClellan swing pass is completed. Flag goes down back in the backfield. Might be a late hit on Leister. He's having trouble getting up. But the pass was completed to McClellan. And he returns it close to the 14-yard line. Might have got a couple of yards on that play. We'll wait for the call on the penalty. Mallory gets credit for the tackle. Dangerous pass. Dave Meredith, that big defensive tackle, went blowing in there on the right side, put his hand up, and the ball just passed right over it. For just a split second, he had visions of touchdowns dancing in his head, I'd imagine. Leister dropping back. Heavy rush again. Gets the ball away, and there's the late hit, and that costs you 15. So the ball moved up just across the 27-yard, a 28-yard line of Michigan State. At the 29, first and 10. Almost pulled off the interception. Leister looked deep the first time, then looked to his swing back, which was uh, McClellan moving out, decided he didn't have any room there, and he still wanted to gamble and overshot Jones. Leister now 14 to 23 for 124. Of course, Leister in the terrible position of that Michigan knows he has to put the ball up in the air, and that's just no place for a quarterback to be because they can all drop and play center field because they're not looking for the run anymore. And though he doesn't need excuses made for him, that bad ankle has really made it tough for him to set up and throw. John Hurts put wide to the right out of your screen right now. On a second and ten for the Spartans, Leister running to his right, looking for a receiver, has no place to go and forced out of bounds. As Chase that time was Rodney Lyles, and he forced him out of bounds. Lyles just came into that ball game a couple of plays ago. Looked as if he was looking for the man that just came in the ball game, John Hurt, number 19, who was running that different pattern that Leister was looking for. It looked like there was a mix up there someplace because Leister looked up and appeared as though he didn't recognize what he saw out there and thought it was much safer to just to pull the ball down and run it out of bounds because they don't need another interception right now. Third and eight. Leister's carried seven times, whether he wanted to or not, this afternoon for a total of 26 yards. Try to stay in the pocket. 
Bryant has a man open and has enough for the first down. He just fires this one out complete to Daryl Turner, and now they say he did not have possession. He juggled it and trapped it when he went to the ground, so it's not a completed pass. Incomplete, fourth down and eight. Well, Turner surely thought he had the ball. You see on the isolation, he's the only one in the camera, makes his cut. He's open, here's the pass. Well, I guess the referees were right that time. Patted it against the floor, incomplete pass. Mosienko checks in now for his sixth punt. He has uh, the five previous ones, averaged a little better than 43 yards, 43.6 to be exact. John Schneider, or rather Jim Schneider, our statistician, keeping us right up with the uh, half percentage points and got his computer going this afternoon. Anthony Carter, or rather, uh, check that one, Evan Cooper signals for the fair catch and takes it at the 33-yard line. So the Wolverines will put it in play. We've got a timeout. The Wolverines on top, 31-3 to three here in the fourth quarter. We won another award for the best news. Yeah, good. And also, we get some file footage from the picture. Sure. Ms. Lewis, we won another award. Thanks, Jimmy. But you know, Bob, if we do... Mr. Legoff, look, we've won another award. Jimmy, if you worry about the news, you don't have to worry about awards. Jimmy, I see Channel 7 won another news. Wolverines all set to go into action with 14.06 remaining in this ball game and with a commanding 31-3 lead over the Spartans of Michigan State. Here's the pitch out to Rogers. Williams comes up quickly to greet him at the 35-yard line. Williams, the cornerback, or rather the uh, strong side safety. Some help also from Madlow. But they get about three yards on that play, second down and seven. Jim Beckler, uh, Bo, trying to get some of those subs in now. Rogers has carried four times at 22 yards. Vince Bean split out wide to the left. Johnson, Delvani Johnson, wide to the right. And Rogers straight ahead that time is dumped in there. As made low. So the submarine in and stopped him. And Rogers having a little problem now as he runs back to the uh, huddle. Third down for Michigan in five yards. They've been successful on seven of the previous 12 occasions. Kerry Smith comes in in place of Rick Rogers for Michigan tailback position. Kerry, the young man who played at. Uh, Forest Hills and Grand Rapids, a junior now, 6'2 and 190-pounder, wearing uh, uniform number 23, so we'll keep an eye on him. A bow really a luxury you don't get very often in the middle of your Big Ten season. That is your starters sitting out this early in the fourth quarter, a chance to rest. Smith takes the pass and takes a terrible shot from the blind side. It's coming in there hard with Chris Bell, defensive end. And Smith is slow, getting to his feet. Just as he released that ball on the pass that was headed for the sideline, took a tremendous shot from Chris Bell. He had no idea at all this was coming. He is setting up. He wants to go to the right side. Somebody missed their block, and they will hear about that in the huddle. Bracken checks in for his fourth punt for the Wolverines, averaging a little better than 40 yards on his previous three, 40.7. Almost had it blocked. He juggled it, and a short punt this time as it floats around at the Michigan State 35-yard line and down in there by the Wolverines. Coming in there to uh, down it for him, the Wolverines was Randall, another Smith. So 12.32 to go, and the Spartans still playing catch-up, trailing the Wolverines 31-3. to it's strictly desperation time now for Michigan State, I'd say, Steve. Well, that's no fun for anybody to be in if you're a Michigan State fan, quarterback, or coach, because Michigan knows exactly what's coming, and that's what it is. Leister going deep. And he had this one intended for Daryl Turner. No success on that one. Turner covered by Marion Body, also coming over to help out on the play, Jeff Cohen for the Wolverines. That'll be second down and 10 for Michigan State at the Spartan 36-yard line. Meister now 14 of 25, still 124 yards. He was going to the gamble there. There's a man that's had a good afternoon, Steve Smith, still smiling after taking that uh, tough shot in the ribs. A 
on a 35 a couple of plays ago. But certainly uh, it's got to be a morale builder for Smith this afternoon. And his oh, plenty of reason to smile today. He's had a great ball game. Leister swing pass again to McClellan. Trying to find some running room and forced out of bounds over there. Burgai, the strong side uh, halfback, coming up and running out of bounds after McClellan. They picked up about six yards on the reception, so it'll be third and four. Well, Michigan will be happy to give them that for the rest of the afternoon because the way their defense is set up now, that's what they would love Michigan State to do. Drive downfield with five and six-yard passes and eat up the clock. The defensive backfield is just playing center field now, trying to knock down anything long, and they'll give away those sideline passes. McClellan, mostly on those swing passes, has seven receptions for a total of 29 yards. It's third and five. Leister gets away from the pressure, still trying to find somebody open, and completes it. Shaking dice on that one and unloads to his tight end, Terry Tanker, Tim Anderson, back up interior linebacker, making the hit after the reception was made. Good pressure by the Michigan front line. As Leister rolls out, wants to go long, but as expected, there's just nobody there. But he keeps his head. He has played quite a ball game today, finds Tanker open over the middle. And he picks up the first down. And you can see him trying to get away from Rogers, the middle guard that time. Number 61, Tanker, two receptions for uh, 25 yards for the Spartans. First of 10 at the Michigan 45-yard line. Meister connected away this time and not being denied. But charging in there and making a stop on him was big number 93. And that was Limoran who came in there, a backup outside linebacker shooting in. But a flag goes down and we may get a penalty on top of the play. Well, I that's too bad for him. He made a nice rush, a nice tackle, but he's going to nullify himself with a face mask. When he took Leister down, he grabbed him on the mask, and it is all for naught. Coaches saw a good play and just turned out the wrong way. Come around, number 93, as we told you, a young man in his senior year out of Grafton, Wisconsin. Leister dropping back, and watch Lemoran come in. No doubt about it, he's got them beat, but there's the face mask. And he knows he made a mistake. So four penalties against Michigan for a total of 40 yards. They lead in this ball game 31 to 3. 11:27 to go. Spartans trying to move. Flag goes down. Completed to Jones on the pass, and he gets inside the Michigan 30-yard line, close to the 26. Jeff Cohen in there, along with Tim Anderson, the linebacker. But a flag is back around the 48-yard line. They're going to call that one back too. I'm afraid they gave John Leister a little bit too much time. Offensive line holding. So often you see that after a quarterback is sacked on a big rush, the linemen are so conscious on the very next play of keeping the defense out that somebody will try to get an extra little grip. And that's what happened that time. A very costly holding penalty against the Spartans. All right, both teams have been penalized four times and both worth a total of 40 yards. Can't be uh, much more even than that, except for the score in this ball game. 31 to 3, Wolverines. Lady Michigan State. The ball will be placed uh, just at the 50 yard line. So we'll go to uh, first down and 15 for Michigan State. Meister. The Jones complete, sliding across the middle. And taking a couple of linebackers with him, Bourne and Anderson, and they both get credit for the sharing the tackle on it. But it is uh, a reception made by Jones, and they pick up just about eight yards on that play, make it nine yards, and it'll be second down. And uh, give them eight yards and second down of seven. I don't think Muddy Waters expected John Leister would, would be playing this much today. He indicated yesterday that Leister may not see any action, but Lavelle was just ineffective in his first start as a Spartan. Meister playing on that injured ankle has had a pretty good ball game, although he has not been able to move his offense into the end zone. Jones with four receptions uh, this afternoon. Might be closer than it is. A Spartan first down. McClellan on a carry that time. Burgi runs him out of bounds, but not until McClellan had got just inside the 35-yard line, the 34-yard line of Michigan. 10-11 left in the ball game. Wolverines on top, 31-3. A first down at 10 for Michigan State. I'm Ray Lane. And along with my good friend, Steve Gagiola, 
We hope that you're enjoying this telecast. Maybe some of the Spartan fans not enjoying this goal. Well, I guess we can't hope they're enjoying it too much, but we're having a good time up there anyway ourselves. Spartans have just racked up their 14th first down. First and 10. Leister looking for somebody open, and now fires to break the Grant. Grant had got knocked down to the turf, got back up, and that's when Leister spotted him. And he was in the open by that time, made the reception, and then was greeted by Tim Anderson. Shy of the first down, got six on the play, second down and four. It's a shame it isn't a much closer game, if only because Muddy Waters is such a nice man that I hate to see this happen to him, because I thought if there was going to be an upset, I thought this might be their chance, and it just hasn't gone well for him today, and I hate to see it keep happening for Muddy. 0-5 if they lose this one. On the carry, Marcus Tony and stacked up over there was boring coming in there and plugging up the hole. They were trying to get a block that time on the right side to open something up for Michigan State and there was no go as Schramm the tackle on the right side was pulling and trying to find somebody to block but by the time he got out there there was some very quick coverage as far as the linebackers moving up to plug the hole Tony on his first carry of the afternoon he gets a minus one so we go third down and five Leister will go out of bounds and he's going to be shy of the first down by at least a couple of yards. Forced out of the pocket trying to find receivers. Good work that time by the defensive secondary of the Wolverines covering the intended receivers and meanwhile Hammerstein forcing Leister out of the pocket and out of bounds. So it's fourth down. Michigan State five of seven in the second half here on third down conversions. And they're going to need at least uh, four yards to get this one. Fourth down. Long count this time by Leister. Puts it on a little free picker over the middle to the outside on a one-on-one. -on -one. Completion is made to Tony Woods. He goes out of bounds for the Spartans. That's something to cheer about as they get a first down. That's a very tough pass, only because it's a com it's completely a timing play. Leister throws the ball before his receiver even looks for it. And when his man turns around, he just has to hope the ball is there. And when Tony Woods makes the turn, Leister's floating pass was right there. So a tough call on a fourth down. Berg guy on the coverage that time on that play. Leister now 19 of 30 for 185 yards. The Spartans first and 10 at the Michigan 12-yard line. Too much happening on the tailback position that time. Tony Ellis on the carry tried to go over the top. Got close to the 10-yard line. Mark it at the 10. And give him credit for a couple of yards on that carry. It'll be second down and eight. So eight yards before they can get a first down and still not get a touchdown. Well, this late in the game, it certainly comes down to a matter of pride. Michigan State wants to be in that end zone, if only to make this game a little bit closer. going out of bounds. Vaughn forcing that time out of bounds on Terry Hawkins. Hawkins got to the seven. So it'll be third down again for Michigan State. And they need about five yards for the first down. 8.46 remaining in the ball game. has dominated almost from the start 31 to 3. They led at the halftime by a score of 21 to 3. Leister going again now for another pass into the end zone and not being able to handle it. It's McClellan. Diving effort is made and now they're going to give him credit for it. Wait a minute. Well the one official has signaled touchdown but I tell you certainly nothing against the Spartans but if that's a touchdown and I got to thank that official from East Lansing because there was no way in the world he caught that ball in the end zone. And I would like to see the Spartans score as much as anybody, but there was just no way in the world he's in the end zone. We'll watch on the replay. Leister rolls out, sends most of the flow to the left side. Well, I don't know now. Maybe he did have it. He hit the ground. The, all the rule says is you have to be across the plane of the goal line in possession of the ball. You don't have to necessarily hit the ground because as soon as he touched the ground, the ball squirted away from him. But the official obviously felt that while he was in midair, he had control of the ball. 
fans here certainly don't agree. All right, Rosico will try for the extra point. Instead, they'll try for two. And Sherio attempts to pass it. It was intended that time for Tony Ellis. It's incomplete, and they get six, and that's all. We get another look at it. Leister makes the pass. The question is, is he in the area of the end zone, and does he have possession of the ball? He's in midair. Well, in slow motion, it appears he had it for a touchdown. So maybe after charity here at Michigan Stadium. And with 8.41 to go, Michigan 31, Michigan State 9. Protesting a little uh, too much. Florida Lone Sportsman's like conduct penalty nailed on to the Wolverines. So the Spartans will kick this one off from the 45-yard line of the University of Michigan. This should be a chip shot for Mosienko for no return. Well, I'm glad for that official that the score was 31 to 3 at that point because it was a tough call. But again, on the replay, the slow motion, which was a luxury for us, it did appear it was a touchdown. So we have to credit the officials with a fine call. Squib kick goes out of bounds right around the 11 yard line. The Spartans are looking for a little possession if they could uh, capitalize on a mistake. So it goes back and they mark it at the 11 yard line of the University of Michigan. And that's where the Wolverines will put it in play. Really, you could uh, look at that play again and maybe look at it all day and all evening and all night and maybe next week and come up with uh, a lot of judgments on that. Well, if it was a game winner, this crowd would be up, up with something now. 11 plays, 64 yards, a seven-yard reception by McClellan, a disputed reception, but again, it looked like a touchdown on the replay. Took him 351, 31 to 9, though. They missed the conversion, going for two. 841 to go in the ball game with Garrett and Smith, the running backs. Carry Smith, that is. And that is Smith on the carry. Carry showing some pretty good speed. The letterman from Grand Rapids moving up across the 15-yard line, close to the 19-yard line. As Carl Williams, strong safety, finally tripped him up. Michigan still doing what they want to do, even with the, the reserves in there. Nice hole through the line. And he finds the hole, and that's what you need your running back to do. The play is designed to go someplace in particular, but the back has got to find the hole. Tom Allen, a junior out of Cincinnati, checks into the tackle position for Michigan State. And Allen gets credit that time, along with uh, Wojciechowski. On the stop on the Wolverines, the ball at the 20-yard line. It's third and one for the University of Michigan. This has got to be the most disappointing loss by far this season for Michigan State, only because the Spartans felt they were very evenly matched with Michigan and could very well win this ball game, and they've just not been in it. Garrett and Kerry Smith are running backs. And this is Kerry Smith. 35-40. And sort of ridden out of bounds. 47 yard line by Carl Williams on a good run that time by Kerry Smith as we mentioned out of Grand Rapids Smith has not seen an awful lot of action this year but that's the way you want to run it he finds the hole up the middle then breaks to the outside and then it's just a foot race and he rides for an extra four or five yards they are way out near midfield another first down for the Spartans got 28 on that carry he's carried twice for a total of 36 yards uh, he'd only carried four times during this ball game and there he is off and running again crosses the 50 and the Michigan State territory close to the 48 yard line will wait till the unpile that was a first and 10 on that carry by Kerry Smith the market at the 48 Tom Allen making a stop for Michigan State 708 remaining in the ball game in Michigan on its way to its third win of the year. All three in Big Ten play, leading by a score of 31 to 9. 40 yards now on three carries by Kerry Smith. And they'll try him again. Why not? And you got a hot hand across the 40 to the 39 yard line of Michigan State. And James Neely finally brings him to ground, but give credit to that Michigan line as they are opening up a nice hole for the running back. Neely's been held very quiet this afternoon, very much in check, but then they've been double teaming him a lot of the afternoon. He was in on that tackle, although I'm sure at this point he's not much concerned with his own tackle statistics because the Spartans are way out of the ballgame. This is Kerry Smith we've been talking about. He has carried now four times for 53 yards. 
And he takes the pitch out from Steve Smith. No relation. And that's good enough for more yardage that time on a first and 10 inside the 35, close to the 32 of Michigan State. Wojciechowski in there to make the stop for the Spartans. But right now, a demoralized uh, Michigan State team not putting up too much of battle in the trenches right now against the Wolverines. Well, I guess he's been waiting all year long for Michigan's front line to come alive. I don't know if Bo finally got the message across, but his front line has controlled the, the trenches, as the saying goes. And Michigan has thus controlled the ball game. Close to the first down, Ricks departed in the ball game in the early stages of the fourth quarter after getting uh, 90 yards, and that's been the top rusher, Lawrence Ricks, in the ball game. But believe it or not, Kerry Smith, who came in here in late stages of the game, has carried now and is now the second uh, rusher in the game with a total so far of 60 yards on five carries. Rick's just a little under his average, 105 yards per game coming into today's contest. He had 422 yards in the first four games of the season, so he is having quite a year, although he's just a little under average. Michigan third and one, and they have converted seven of 13 times so far. Right now, let's take a timeout. Michigan on top 31 to nine over Michigan State. I like to say, I know I have a good side now. I'm trying to prevent the Wolverines from scoring again with the 5.31 to go. Third and one at the Spartan 30-yard line. Perry Smith tries the door, fumbles the ball, and recovered by Michigan State. He was greeted right at the line of scrimmage, took a jolt, and Carl Banks. Well, get credit for that one for Michigan State. So the Spartans stop the drive by the Wolverines and will take over at their own 29-yard line. Couldn't really see what happened on the play. Smith went into the line and lost it in the middle of that, uh, that pileup. Of course, the Spartans naturally grabbing to steal the ball away as opposed to stop the ball carrier because though it seems to be far out of reach, he certainly will not give up a hope of a victory. Although the crowd has, they have begun to file out with five minutes left. 5.25 to go. At the 29 of Michigan State, Leister still going to get in the air. And a little comeback pattern this time, and finally going out of bounds was Darrell Turner. Got the first down and scampered out of bounds at the 43-yard line. In front of him was Jeff Cohen to force him out of bounds. So it moves it up to the 43-yard line of Michigan State. And that time you can notice the Wolverines really playing off the intended receivers, giving them anything in the middle best they can and nothing long. At this point, all they need to do is play center field. Just knock down the long ones. Three wide receivers in there for Michigan State. And the pass is completed to Grant. He has a first down. Gets inside Michigan territory, just about the 44-yard line. The only running back the Spartans had that time in a set position was the fullback, Tony. As we went into that last commercial break, a beautiful shot of quarterback Steve Smith and his coach, Bo Schembechler, and Bo was actually laughing a little bit, a little chuckle. That's the first time I've seen Bo pleased this year, pleased enough to smile. That one thrown behind the antenna receiver, and no chance at all. For Grant to make the play on that one and covered by Herman, the linebacker, for the University of Michigan. So Leister now 23 of 35 for 222 yards. Now that, that sounds very impressive, but it's been catch up all day long for John. A lot of short passes, and now these last, he'll maybe get six or seven more before the game is over, but those 10 yard passes, Michigan is very happy to give those away. Second and 10, and the Spartans will go no place at all. Because in there, to really make a hit was Rodgers of the University of Michigan, right at the line of scrimmage. He just as well could take him the handoff. Nobody fooled at all by that one. Everybody there to meet him as he got to the line of scrimmage. Spartans thought they might catch him off guard by running on a long second down play. Nothing's working today. Not a thing, as a timeout has been called for with 4.50 to go. We'd like to give our thanks this afternoon to the University of Michigan Athletic Director Don Canham and Bo Schembechler and his coaching staff and U of M Sports Information Director Bruce uh, Motti 
and his staff for their help, as well as Michigan State's athletic director, Doug Weaver, and coach Muddy Waters, and the MSU director of sports information, Nick Vista, and his staff for their assistance. Our statistician this afternoon has been Jim Schneider, who has done a professional job. We thank him very much. And our spotter, John Mall. Thank you, gentlemen. And we might as well give you these up-to-date stats from Jim right now. McClellan, seven carries and 23 yards for Michigan State. And right now, it's an eight uh, times out of 15. The Spartans have been successful on third down conversions. And they face that situation right now on third and 12 at the 46-yard line of Michigan. Jones was sort of a basket catch there at the 40-yard line, pushed back to the 41. Not enough for the first down. And covering on the play that time was Burgess, the defensive back for the Wolverines. Of course, at this point in the game, third and 10 really isn't much because the Spartans with the luxury of two downs to get the first down because you know they're going to go for fourth down so they can make two five-yard plays instead of one long one. <laughs> fourth and seven. Doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot when you're down 31-9, but... Meister firing, got a first down of his man stayed in territory, he did, it was Jones. Jones just inside the 30, the Wolverines, first down. Just sort of a little sideline pattern and coming back that time, and Meister spotted him. I don't think that bothers Bo a bit at this point. They needed about five yards, and Michigan very much happy with giving it up, the five yards for the first down, because they know they're keeping them away from the end zone, and at this point, that's all they're interested in. Six catches for Ted Jones for a total of 71 yards. First and 10 for the Spartans. Trying to get another touchdown before the end of this ball game. Weister passes out complete from the ground at the 25. Gets to the 20-yard line. Very close to the first down. Weister was looking toward the end zone where he had a couple of deep men down there. And... Uh, couldn't find anybody open, so he then went to McClellan and Burgess. The defensive back comes in to make the tackle. Second down and less than a yard. Right at the 20-yard line. Leister, swing pass to McClellan. Cuts back in. Gets the first down, but not by much. He put the head down, and the helmets were sort of uh, just hitting together down there. Burgess in there, and he had some help from Herman. First down, Spartans were down to 337 remaining in the ball game. And Michigan leading by a score of 31 to 9. 250 yards right now by Leister through the air, 27 to 39. And 10 of those catches have been made by McClellan. The Jones wide open at the five yard line, gets to the four. And in there was Body and Hewlett. How's the, day going for, how's the day going for Michigan State? An indication there, but just before the snap, Leister set to call some audibles. The Michigan State band started to play the fight song, and he had to wave to the band to be quiet so he could call some signals. So even the band is hurting him today. A good turnout pattern. Found himself open at the five-yard line. That isn't what the Wolverines want to do. 85 yards to the air on seven catches by Jones. McClellan dives in. From the five-yard line, make it from the four-yard line, he goes in for the touchdown. And the Spartan fans, once again, who have been fairly quiet today, have something to cheer about. Well, I think that tells you about this kind of rivalry, and that even though at this point the game is out of reach, there is so much pride involved in the rivalry between these two teams that when McClellan dives into the end zone for the touchdown, you know all the Spartan fans are still here to cheer, trying to save a little bit of pride out of this one. Well, on the previous touchdown, the Spartans then tried for a two-point conversion. They did not have, they had to fake the extra point and wanted to pass off of it. And now the Spartans, by well, this time in the ball game at 3.06, you'd think they'd have some special things ready to go. Somebody was missing from the bench, and Leister had a call for a timeout on the extra point try, believe it or not. There's something wrong with the communication over there on that bench. Well, they're looking for the 16-point conversion play, possibly, at this late in the game. <laughs> Buddy Waters, troops a little bit disorganized. You hate to waste a timeout, although it really doesn't make any difference at this point in the game. As I said, because they're playing for pride, they just don't want to see any mistakes on this conversion because it is two more points. But again, your point, Ray, which is a good one, this is the problem. These kind of mistakes where you waste timeouts and you have to call a, a timeout you'd want to save later in the game, you don't have the proper people on the field, those are the mistakes that kill you in a close ballgame. 
3.06 remaining. Leister had gone to the bench, came back to the huddle now as the Spartans went 71 yards and 10 plays, capped off by McClellan's four yard plunge. So they will try for the extra point here. Michigan State now with 15 points on the board, trailing 31 to 15. And uh, they're going to go for two here. See if they can make it 17. Three wide receivers, one set back. Meister rolling out and passing complete. This one going to Otis Grant. And so they chalk up the two point conversion. It was a long time in coming, but they get it despite the timeout. And now the Spartans trail 31 to 17. No time used in the clock, of course, for the extra point conversion. They brought Otis Grant in motion towards the line from the sidelines. And after about five steps, he cut back to the corner of the end zone. And at that point, he had a good angle on his defender. and wide open for the catch. Two more points, which the Spartans desperately needed. 31 to 17. Is it too late to think for an onside kick? Are they still in the ball game in their minds? Well, if they thought they could get the ball, they'll try it, huh? Why not? Really nothing to lose at this point. The Spartans managed to get 17 points off of Illinois in the first game of the season. They got only 10 against Ohio State. Against Miami, they were in pretty good shape when they got 22. Last week, it was a disaster time as far as their offense was concerned. They managed to get only three against Notre Dame. Michigan has a lot of ball handlers up on the front line, so they must be thinking the same way. Rosieko. right around the 24 yard line he didn't certainly put a he didn't put an easy handle on it for anybody well, I guess there are really two strategies to onside kicks one you squib the ball hoping it'll go the 10 yards and somebody pounces on it the other strategy being what Bozienko tried to do is you drill a line drive and if you're lucky it'll go right at somebody and bounce off their pads and then it'll be a free ball so he hit the line drive nobody touched it out of bounds that would be a five-yard penalty, or Michigan can take control of the ball where it went out of bounds. They don't want to mess with their onside kick, so they have chosen to take the possession. Don't blame them. They didn't want to try it again. At least Michigan didn't want a, ch a chance to, to touch that ball at all. I'd rather touch it from the line of scrimmage in possession of it and not on the kickoff. Kerry Smith, the tailback, checks back in for Michigan. And the new quarterback is David Hall, the junior. Stevenson and Greg Armstrong will compliment Kerry Smith in the backfield. Junior out of Middleton, Ohio. At the 25 yard line, Kerry Smith on the uh, carry, and Carl Banks gets credit for the hit and the tackle. At the 25, second down and nine, give him credit for a, a yard. Sim Nelson, the tight end, checks in, and Carthens comes out. The story on that last Spartan drive and touchdown capped off by McClellan's four-yard run up the middle. Gary <laughs> Smith on the carry. It's close to the 28-yard lines, and once again, it's Carl Baggs. But let's go back, Steve, and talk about Steve Smith, the fellow that gave way to David Hall. Well, Steve Smith has got to feel so good about what has happened today because I know all week he was a little bit apprehensive because the fans have been on him and he hasn't been very effective passing although he has been good running today his passing was there and some big plays to Anthony Carter the touchdown to Dunaway a touchdown for Carter Smith has really had control today he has really seemed very confident and that of course good news for Smith and coach Bojevic. Rich out coming to Smith, who carries for the ninth time. He was 8 for 65 on the ground. And you're talking about Steve Smith. He ended up on a pretty good day. You're right. Well, that's about 50%. 10 of 19 in the passing department. 179 yards. So a good day for him. Kerry Smith is having a much better day than I imagine he would have thought against Michigan State. Probably didn't figure to play today. Well, he has seen a lot of activity. Now carried nine times. And and right now, the Wolverines are shy of a first down by a long yard. We're down to 144. And 
Coming in to handle a punt again is Bracken. who will try for only his fifth of the afternoon. Average slightly better than 37 yards on the free uh, the previous four punts. So we got a timeout and a little strategy plan by both benches with the remaining 144 in the game. Well, I would think if I'm Michigan State, I've got to put 11 men up front and send everybody that I can in to block that ball. And I would imagine that's what Bo Schembechler is telling his troops right now. It's going to be an all-out rush because the Spartans don't need good field position, obviously, at this point in the game. They need the ball into the end zone, and a block kick is just about the only thing that's going to do it on this play. And you're absolutely right. Ten Spartans up on the line. Single safety. The handle of the punt is Dixon around his own 28-yard line. Here's Bracken to handle the punt for Michigan. It's fourth of the afternoon. High spiral. Moving Dixon back and to his right at the 24-yard line. Got no place to go. And tackled down there on good coverage by the Wolverines. And that was Kerry Smith who was down there to make the tackle on him. So not only has he done a good job of coming in and being a reserve running back, but he gets down there and makes a stop. Bracken hit a boomer, and that's what they needed because there was a big rush on, although he was in no danger of having that kick blocked. A good high spiral puts the Spartans back in their own territory, about the 25-yard line. 31-17, Michigan leading Michigan State, 133 remaining in this ball game. Meister trying to find somebody again. Circus catch uh, was really demanded on that play by Grant. He couldn't make it over there to the sidelines on the far side of the field, right in front of the Spartan bench. Burgeye covering along with Hewlett. Leading rushers so far in the afternoon, this is, looks as if it probably stay this way now. Is Ricks with 90 for Michigan. Kerry Smith in the fourth quarter comes up with 71 yards. And the leading rusher for Michigan State, McClellan with 27. Kerry Smith gets the game ball, I guess. Why not, huh? Second and ten. Over the middle to the Jones boy again. Completed. And battles his way close to a first down. Burgeye around the ankles to trip him up. And it is a Spartan first down with 121 to go. Really have not seen a weakness today in Michigan that I could put my finger on that Bo Schembechler might be upset about. The offense has moved the ball very well. The defense is really not given. They've had the reserves in there during this Michigan State drive. Leister trying to hit that time. His split in Daryl Turner throws a little bit low, and Body was over there to cover number three for Michigan. Leister not happy with the, either the pattern that his uh, receivers were running that time on the left side. Jones and Turner were in the same territory completely. It looks a little bit confusing down there for the Spartans on several occasions. A little too disorganized. But then, buddy, that he said that was the problem. Inexperience in his offense. 112 remaining, second at 10. And Leister fires this one complete. Not enough first down. For a first down, gets oh, about four or five yards out of it. And Burgai and Mallory, or rather uh, Boren, making the hit. Leister now 30 of 44. We're right around uh, 280 yards, close to it. At the 41 of the Spartans, third down and seven. 107 remaining. Leister with lots of time going for Jones. Can't make the catch. Jones has got away from Bostic there. And was close to making the reception at the five-yard line on a diving effort, but could not quite catch up with it. It was just a little bit overthrown. Jones made a nice move to the middle of the field, and obviously it's a desperation play, but Jones tried to run under it just out of his reach. So it'll take a little extra time for those receivers who went very deep on that pattern to get back to the huddle. We're down to one minute remaining in the game. Spartans on a dying gasp right now on a fourth down and seven at their own 41. Leister to the sideline to Jones complete. And 
out of bounds. So that's another first down. Hewlett was over there to cover on the play. And the Spartans get into Michigan territory at the 47-yard line on the far side of the field. The ball walked back into that hash mark on the far side. 53 seconds remaining, 31-17, Wolverines leading. The story really has belonged to the Wolverines from the first couple of minutes into this ball game. Never say die. Spartans keep grinding it out, trying to get back into the end zone. Jones with nine catches now for 111 yards. And that one intended for Daryl Turner. Hewlett going up and timing that one perfect. The offense for the Spartans has got to be very simple at this point. It's you go out long, you go out about 20 yards and cut in, you go long, and I'll just throw it up and hope somebody catches it. And it's a shame the game has gotten to that, to that level, but that's the only hope they have. You go back and take a look at number two here, Rich Hewlett, and you say, gee, I remember that fellow. We'll go back to 1980 when he was a quarterback behind John Wangler. And then uh, after the 80 season, they decided they'd take the Plymouth Salem uh, graduate, high school graduate, and make him a defensive back. A lot of people thought Hewlett would be the starting quarterback for the next few years. And all of a sudden, Bo decided Steve Smith was his man. It looks like it's tough to argue with that decision today. Well, the Spartans stay in possession of that ball. However, they're back to their own 43-yard line. And it's a first down and just about uh, 20 yards. Both teams now have five penalties and both for a total of 55. Basket catch by Terry Tanker. And he loses the ball. Fumble. Michigan recovers. And that'll cap off a frustrating afternoon for the Spartans of Michigan State and a highlight for the Wolverines when Robert Thompson comes up with that fumble after a circus catch was made by Terry Tanker and couldn't hang on to it. Great catch by Terry Tanker as Leister rolls out. Just a little flip pass way up with one hand. Turns and starts upfield. Made the right move, switching to the outside, but they just gang tackle him and the ball comes loose. And that opens it up for Robert Thompson and company. Thompson diving in there. Gergash sort of doing a little ballet dance, trying to line up that ball before he came in there, and Thompson wouldn't wait for him. He went right after it. Michigan, Kerry Smith on the carry. Inside the 35, down to around the 33-yard line. Carey will be short of his 100-yard day, but still quite an afternoon for him. Gary really listed as a third tailback behind Ricks and Rogers, but he has had plenty of work, especially here in the fourth quarter. He's turned out to be a workhorse. Down to seven seconds. Last play of the ball game. Unless we get a timeout someplace along the line, we will not. That'll be the last play of the contest as time has run out here at Michigan Stadium. And a fairly good afternoon and easy afternoon for the Wolverines as they come through with a win over Michigan State. The final score, Michigan 31, the Spartans of Michigan State 17. We'll be right back. Brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer. Whichever model you choose, best of all, it's a Cadillac. With the victory by the Wolverines this afternoon, uh, 31 to 17 over the Spartans of Michigan State. The Wolverines now run their record to 3 and 0 overall record of the Big Ten. And for the Spartans, they are now 0 and 3. And of course, they are the cellar dwellers. Marty has to be more than disappointed at the uh, offense primarily today. Less than 50 yards in rushing. Michigan almost 300 yards in rushing. That was the difference. Steve Smith in control. Spartan defense didn't show us much. That's what Muddy was counting on, and I think they were probably the big, biggest disappointment. Somebody said uh, during halftime that maybe the Spartan defense was just tired out because it's been all defense in their four previous games. Well, that was probably a good point. They would have to break at one point. They haven't broken through the first four games. They were tough. 
just didn't have it today. Bo did pretty much what he wanted when he wanted, and he had a confident quarterback, which we haven't seen at Michigan yet. This year. And that was uh, testified to at the halftime because Michigan had a 21 to 3 lead at that particular time. The Wolverines came out, and sort of a, an effort was made by the Spartans in the early moments of the third quarter, and then they coughed up the ball on a fumble, and that was just about their last gasp. That may have psychologically done it to them. You know, Anthony Carter got the touchdown. When Anthony scores one, that does it to you naturally anyway. But when they got that last turnover after the long drive, I think that might have psychologically ended it for them that they thought the game was over. For the Wolverines, as I mentioned, in the Big Ten, 3-0, their overall record now, 3-2. And, and the Spartans of Michigan State still looking for their first win of 1982. Their record overall, now no wins and five losses. Steve, it's been fun working with you. I enjoyed it, and I had a good time. Oh, I enjoyed it very much, Ray. Thank you. And we certainly hope you fans enjoyed it, too. The final score, once again, from Ann Arbor, the University of Michigan, 31, the Spartans of Michigan State, 17. So long, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.